and welcome to another episode of West Underground. Now, today we've got uh, a comedian joining us. He's also a drummer, we've just found out, and uh, and has a backstory of being a musician that is that is worthy of him being here just for, for, for that for that standalone. But um, he's joining us across state lines from Brisbane, and it is none other than James Matthew. You motherfucker. <laughs> Okay, James, James Matthew. Matthew. James Matthew. For the next. Fine. Fine. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 it came out, and then I realised I've given, I've given all my oxygen for all the, all the credits at the start, and I was like, Are you fucking with me? <laughs> are you, are you, are you fucking with this guy? <laughs> yeah. James Matthews, welcome to West Underground. Thank you for coming. Boys, yeah. Thank my you pleasure. for being on. My pleasure. my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you very That's much. Great. Great. And look at that microphone. Look at that for a setup. So for everyone listening or watching, we had about a 20-minute technical difficulty where none of us knew how to do a thing ever. It's like we've never done any of this. But I'm yeah. glad of it because it started with my bullshit and I was like, you're looking, you know, I'm looking bad, which is why, <laughs> which is why I said I'm a drummer because that's an excuse for technical, you know, fuck, fuckery. Yeah. Uh, so I'm glad that Seamus, I'm, I'm glad that the struggle happened because that made me feel better about my own misgivings at the beginning. So I'm happy with it. Ah, oh, man. Well, at least, at least, at least, at least you're happy. And that's a good start. I'm happy too now that we, we're, uh, we're here. Do you know, Jack, and, uh, you know, James, I may as well tell you this little story before we begin. We're nearly at a hundred episodes so far, and we haven't we haven't run into like too much of a too much of an audio problem. So I suppose it's never too late to start. <laughs> Why not? Modern technology can can be fucked. You know, you can you can have struggles even where it's so streamlined and so set up, so foolproof, shit can go wrong, and it's a blessing because sometimes things are too easy. Like sometimes production stuff is so easy. And then mm -hmm. the actual production is so shit. It looks so good. It yeah. sounds so great, but it sucks so much. Like I'd rather hear something that doesn't sound, you know, perfect, but it's worth listening to anyway, than something that's like, oh man, the audio is so good, but I don't want to fucking hear it. You know, there's so much horse shit about. I think it's that sometimes production stuff's too easy now. Cause you get all sorts of like, I don't know, people who maybe should never create anything, creating stuff. Yeah. And it just like floods the market and just, it's just, everything sucks. Yeah, you're, you're, you're very right, man. It's very easy to get in now. Like you used to be a closed gate world, you know, like you had to, you had to kind of earn your way, your, your right to kind of get into showbiz in any kind of way. And uh, you had to know yeah. shit. Yeah. You had to know someone who knew shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, how did you, we were having a bit of a conversation off air and we're like we didn't we didn't know about your music background and i think i think we should right. we should start the podcast there and really dive into your story because <laughs> it is and for every one of you that are watching this it's a fucking brilliant story and it is <laughs> guys and girls this when he was telling us before when we were having technical fuck ups right and left <laughs> i burst out laughing because i did not expect yeah. i didn't <laughs> and I thought that's I what it was all about. And I thought that's what it, what it was all about. Okay, James, tell us. Go into it, man. Tell us. Oh, well, tell us about James. James, the rock star. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The failed. Yeah, you know, it's frustrating because I've been playing drums like my whole life, right? And I've been in heaps of bands, some more successful than others, but some quite successful. I've I've played drums on over a hundred records, right? Because I was working as a um, session musician here in Brisbane. Um, but, you know, I've also gone over to Los Angeles to go snowboarding, not to play drums. But while I was over there, I just happened to go to L.A. Mm. and I had contacts there. So I made like 10 records, you know, in a week when I was in Los Angeles. So um, I've made I've been playing drums on a lot of records and I've, and I've dedicated a, a large part of my life to being great at drums. Right. But I was living with this friend of mine, uh, Ben Lestrange, and he hates country music. We grew up an hour south of Brisbane. It's kind of rural. And we just have this mutual hate of country music. And for my birthday, he wrote me a country song and sung it to me because <laughs> we were living together. And I, and I enjoyed it so much. I was like, that's so funny and so ironic and, and just a hilarious song. And his birthday is a couple of months after mine. So I wrote him a country song right back. And it turned into this 
you know, and he's playing bass in like a death metal band, mm. you know, and he's played music in, in bands of, you know, varying degrees of success. And we started this stupid country band as a joke. And we did this show on the Gold Coast, which was hilarious. And we, we, we had these dudes, just mates from high school who joined in. We had Lucas Schubring learned how to play the banjo because he's just this insane guitarist, like death metal guitarist. And mm. he learned how to play the banjo for the gig. It was a one-off. <laughs> we go down the Gold Coast, we play this gig. It's pretty small, but it was also fun. And Guy, who owns Serotonin Records on the Gold Coast, just happened to be there. Guy Cooper, who's this lovely, lovely guy. I met him on the night and he's like, man, he's like, I love that. He's like, I fucking love that. When are you? <laughs> he's like, when's the next gig? <laughs> it was a one-off. <laughs> like, when am I fucking doing any more gigs? He's like, that was amazing. That was so much fun. It was fucking amazing. I, I want to see more of it. And we're like, well, we're in all these other bands, you know, come and see this band. Yeah, he couldn't have been less interested in our other <laughs> bands, right? He's like, I want to make a record with you guys. And we're like, we're not. You know, we don't want to make a record with this band. So each of us are, tr- are pulling him in this direction and that direction because we know who he is. We know he owns the studio. We're like, hey, man, you know, you should record this album for us, for this band, or you should look into this or check us out on uh, MySpace. <laughs> right. Throw that's back. What we, back. That's what we had. Well, that's what, but that's what we had, right? So you yeah. should check us out on MySpace, man. And fucking, uh, he didn't want to buy. He's like, no, 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 it's got to be this, right? Well, we don't have any money to make a record. He's like, I'll, I'll make the record. And I'll make it fantastic. And if it doesn't make money, you don't have to pay for it. Yeah. And we were like, oh, fucking all right. So we go down there. I think he was lecturing at Griffith Music at this time. The guy's fucking incredible. He's got this studio on the Gold Coast. He still does to this day. It's only gotten bigger. He's got a fucking empire, this guy. He's a lovely, lovely guy. So we go down to the studio and we start making this record. And we're all high as fuck. We're just, it's just a fucking <laughs> menagerie. We're all how, just how good out. albums always start. <laughs> and Ian Perez was uh, studying music on mm. the Gold Coast campus, right? He was, he was just sort of part of this crew. And he came in and he played keyboards and he just made it. I mean, he made this record incredible with this crazy technique, this crazy honky-tonk like piano that just gave it so much. This this is the guy from Wolf Mother. This guy uh, played uh, keyboards for Wolf Mother for a long time. He probably oh, still wow. does, right? Yeah. Uh, he probably still does. He's the most recent guy, but he's played uh, bass and keys for heaps of massive bands. Mm. Uh, he's been all over the world doing what he does. And he's a lovely, lovely guy. And he turns up and he's sweet and he just does this incredible job. He brought in this session guitarist who was this chicken picking brilliant sort of guitarist because our guitarist was like a death metal guitarist so we totally cheated our way through it and for the most <laughs> part for the most part we had to learn how to play the parts when it went live but we had this thing with guy where we were meant to try to make some of the money back right so we go on tour we tour the record it goes great we, we sell all this merch he helps us with the merchandising we sell all this merch it's crazy but everyone's on drugs so of course they turn up to the shows and i'm the front man I'm a drummer and I'm singing in this band. Yeah. They'd turn up just fucked. And I'd be like, guys, you got to fucking hold it together. Because I still saw it as this fuck around thing. And it's still the bane of my existence that for all the time I put into drums, the most successful band I've ever been in is this ridiculous fucking country mess. That <laughs> largely sucked, but it was this chaotic party. It was just heaps and heaps of fun. And uh, yeah, and the band is called, uh, uh, sorry, the, the record. If you If you Google it, you'll see that the record is actually taking the piss out of a Faith No More record called Angel Dust. Mm. The Angel Dust, Faith No More Angel Dust, is a, uh, it's like a water bird uh, and it's like a purple cover. And we had a purple cover, but instead of this beautiful, uh, like, a, a, I don't know, some sort of water bird, I, I forget the name of it, but we used an ibis mm. <laughs> just to sort of take the piss out of it because we love Faith No More. And we called it, we called the record um, I Can Smell Your Country. <laughs> and it was just so well received it's ridiculous like it just <laughs> fucking was great and people still what, what year did, what year did this come out in month no i didn't man early thousands maybe 2003 i don't know yeah long time but people still i get texts man i get emails people <laughs> you know and so so weirdly like I'm, I'm what was people. the name what was the name of the band again man the okay cowboys man yeah. YouTube, okay, guys, go and go and check it's them fucked. out. Hey it's man, very, I, 
It's sexist. It's disgusting. It's really hard. I just, I just it's, it's a joke. It. You know, it's a joke. <laughs> oh, you found it. You found the album cover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know how good it's going to look if I if I show. We'll get that done in post production, but we'll make it pop sure. up over yeah. over here. We've, we've got the best in the biz. It'll ah. just appear on the screen <laughs> <Nah>. here. <laughs> hey, nice. So yeah, yeah. Mr. Sparks, and, and and so what would happen was uh, you know, and, and yeah, so I thought that I thought, oh yeah, these guys want to have me on. They want to talk about the OK Cowboys again. These must have been a good fucking band if you thought yeah. there's a music podcast well must be about, must be about that was, gig in 2003 it was like fucking, fucking cool man, man i can't wait cool. to hear it i actually can't wait to hear it <laughs> you're gonna enjoy it dude i think so you're gonna enjoy it it's very enjoyable it's very fucking soothing mm. because it's it's totally fucked of course it's just a massive joke but there's there's such favorites on there as mule mule fucking uh, there's a mule fucking song. Actually, the mule fucking song isn't on the <laughs> wait, album. I the mule fucking the song. You see it on YouTube. That's on the YouTube mix. Man, the mule, where the early 2000s? Such a, such a different time. Yeah. Can I read out? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six tracks on here. Do you mind if I read them out? Go ahead. Go I'll, ahead. I'll, I'll read them out almost like, do you remember years ago when there was uh, like when people they would try to sell t- uh, CDs on like TV ads and stuff and they'd be like oh. I can smell your country such classics as the golden coat kick the bitch down <laughs> is it uh, I'm trying to read it but I've got a big light in my face desert uh, bu- bu- bo-, bo desert with a stinking hole bo desert what a stinking hole sure bo desert, sorry what a stinking hole uh, Francine's a uh, horse mm-hmm Okay, cowboy, you've got the you've got the uh, title, title track. Yeah, beautiful, love it. <laughs> yeah, and Lois McGill, Louis McGill. Oh, sorry, Louis McGill. For everyone who's wondering why why I'm almost reading like I'm illiterate, I've got a big LED light that's shining in my face at the moment, and I'm also probably a little bit illiterate. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and he's definitely also a little bit illiterate. Yeah. So, so find more of these classic from OK Cowboy, the biggest band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. Imagine if, right? Imagine if this podcast is like is is the is the fire you needed up your ass <laughs> to come back to. Dude, dude, what, you must be on, bro. You must be on for like a nearly what, like a twenty year anniversary, yeah, 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 bro. Yeah. Dude, dude. The band continued. I left, and five years later, the band continued without me. But it was not a good, it was not a good reprise. I mean, the nah. band had lost a lot of juice, and yeah. it was a very, very different thing. The not the, so good cowboys. Well, the, you're right because the drug use had continued. Mm. Now everyone was proper fuck. Oh, you know, really bad. And 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 also, you know, it was getting some low level play. Yeah, you know, people were listening to it, so they started doing this, and I think that kind of ruined it in a way i mean that that put it back underground for another 10 years but like if you went to see the okay cowboys i wasn't there the music sucked it wasn't very good mm. you know that kind of pushed it underground again for maybe a decade but it's coming back and the guys as far as i know they're doing shows and the shows are good because they're all off drugs now they're all mm-hmm. fucking 40 and yeah. they're all what, 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 what was the drug scene like man when you when you were when you were around in a the band then was it was it still like the cocaine thing or was it like no, a, not for well it all it, changed well, no it, it was it was like when i was playing drums and i was you know and keep in mind all through the okay cowboys days i was still playing drums in a bunch of bands trying mm. to make it i still thought there was that could happen um and that was the cocaine scene that's where that was happening mm. but in the okay cowboys these guys were depressives i mean they grew up near my house they all would like drink and fucking cough medicine and shit barbiturates oh down as they were fuck, like we did this show we, we were down in melbourne um doing a show i think it was like the Fremantle hotel or something and this must have been fuck, at least 15 years ago so we're down there and it was cool like it was a sellout because it's not a big place a small place a downstairs area is there area there so it was you know it was fucking packed i think we sold all our merch on the first night mm. and um but the night before, I went down there with my girlfriend at the time, and we had the band at a hotel across the street. We were staying near the aquarium in Melbourne, like right in the middle of town. And I put all the boys, I was managing the band, and I, I put all the guys uh, in a hotel across the street because this was a rare occasion where I could take my girlfriend with us. 
Mm. So it was like a nice little holiday for us. So we got ourselves a room in a whole other hotel because I knew, you know. <laughs> what, what it turned into. I don't, yeah. I don't want anything yeah. to do it. Anyway, yeah. and, but I got this terrible cold the week before. But you're like, the show must go on. So I'm coughing and wheezing and I'm fucked. And I had this um, bottle of Benadryl on the dresser in the hotel. And uh, Ben turns up at the door at the hotel. And I'm, or, I'm angry. I'm already furious with him because they've been playing up on the plane. And they're fucked. And I said, I said to Ben, dude, just what, what is it? What what is it? You know, what do you need? What's what's up? He's like, oh, nothing, man. You know, he just <laughs> fucking walks in. My girlfriend's just like, oh my god. I'm like, oh. <laughs> he comes in. He's like, hey, this and that and blah blah blah. He's ranting and raving. He's not making any sense. And then he just leaves. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. It wasn't until like half an hour later I realized the Benadryl is gone. <laughs> I go across the street. I go across the street to the other ben, hotel. To ben, Ben is gone with the Benadryl. He's taken He's the gone. Benny. Benny with the Benny, right? <laughs> Benny with the Benny. So I go. I go to the hotel next door and I fucking <laughs> knock on the door. I've lost audio from that. I shouldn't have knocked. Anyway, <laughs> I knock on the door. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, 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 you sound fine. All right. I knock on the door and uh, he answers the door. Right. And, and his face is all red from the phone. I'm like, dude, did you, did you take the Benadryl? He's like, no, man. <laughs> it is oh, it's like candy apple red, like so high up. Like he must have scoffed it because it was even like on the bottom of his yeah, nose. Yeah, it's like sticky <laughs> as well, isn't it? It's like sticky. Well, the, the mouth of a Benadryl is like a 10 cent piece. Mm. So, yeah. So he must have fuck it. Like he must have like left the hotel. Like in the lift, he must have just. <laughs> it's just fucking. Anyway, that's what that was. Man, it's just like what happens if you take too much Benadryl? Is it the same nowadays as it was back then? Like I've never even fucking. I've never heard of this. Yeah, don't it's try weird, this at home, kids. Well, it's well, it's a it's a it's a depressant. So so I think you want the non drowsy. I know that. <laughs> You got to get the non-drowsy is this, mix. Is this for a cold or a mild high? Yeah, you don't want the. Well, there's a couple. There's. Uh, see, I don't know enough about drugs to know. Only, only a proper fucking junkie is going to be able to tell you. But you, I don't know if you want the nighty night formula or the. Or, <laughs> I don't know, and I don't even know what I had at the time. All I know is he fucking snuffled it. He snuffled the whole thing, and then we oh. had the show the next day, and they oh, were all, and they were all just so fucked, you know. So what would happen is, and this is how I started doing comedy, right? Is because what would happen was we turn up for these shows and they'd be just fucked, fucked. And I'd have to carry the whole thing. I'd end up, dude, half the time, I'd end up just talking to the crowd, riling them up and saying something. Because the songs were so fucked, the crowd's there expecting fucked up shit. I'd have to deliver on the spot. I mean, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot like stand-up, right? It's a lot of pressure. You have to perform. People have paid money. So I'd end up just saying horrific shit to them, just horrific shit, and they loved it. And that's kind of how stand-up started. It's, so that's literally how you got into comedy. Mm, mm-hmm. Because Ben had some ninety like Benadryl. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh <laughs> my god, man, that's that's one of the best stories anybody's ever told on this podcast. <laughs> Yeah, hey, it's crazy, just, right? Oh. Just before we jump shit to oh, like man. and get oh. get off get off the get off the music onto the next half of this podcast into your comedy career, you know. Right. Um, but yeah. I just they've just made like you know uh, these these animations and they put them up on YouTube about like the, the the wild stories from country like like country legends over in the states like Johnny Cash and Waylon Jennings. And it sounds like a lot like your your story here. Like it's mm. a lot of the same shit. You know? <laughs> yeah, man. Look, those those look. Yeah, don't don't fuck don't snooze on country because they are they are some fucking dark people. Yeah, and yeah. It's 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 dark. And when you think of it, and you know, it's a, it's kind of an illusion because we think of country music, I think, as as sort of Western people. And now keep in mind, country music is absolutely fucking massive. It's massive. Mm. It's massive in Japan. Japan yeah. is one of the biggest country music festivals in the world, right? Mm. So country music is fucking massive. But like, but it's probably one of the only, one of the few things where if you don't like it, you hate it. No one's yeah. mediocre about country mm. music. Like if you don't like it, you fucking don't like it. 
Yeah. And I was like, oh, country music? Yeah, yeah, yeah I dabble. No. You're a massive fan or you fucking hate it. Yeah. And people hate it. And no one we knew liked it. Yeah. So yeah. It was this huge surprise that people... And what's funny is the people turning up to the shows hated country music too. It was a big joke. And the joke was on country people. And we wrote songs about them fucking their animals and their sisters and shit. And people... <laughs> And people love it. I mean, kick the bitch down. Kick, kick the bitch down, right? Kick the bitch down. There's a song about country people bashing their wives because they're country people. So they're fucking, so they're fucked in their head. And that's what the songs are about. So, I mean, years later, I copped flack about it. It's like, you wrote a song called Kick the Bitch Down. It's like, it's, we're taking the piss out. Yeah, of it's all satire. It's yeah, yeah. satire. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought I'd get away with it. I was like, we're taking the piss out of people. Well, who? Country people. Well, you can't do that either. Yeah, oh, you can't do that. You know what, though? Like, what's the difference between that and like what Weird Al has done? You know what I mean? Like, really? What, what's no, the difference? Nothing. Uh, yeah, the, the, the censorship's out of control. Um, but I also. Yeah, I've just been thinking <laughs> YouTube are going to screw the shit out of us for this. No, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. Because we're. No, no, because I'm not, I'm not going to sing the song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not the song. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not getting paid i'm not singing the song yeah, okay. <laughs> um but um i'm, I'm glad i'm kind of glad <laughs> don't you want to hear a couple I, of times man my, my, you don't want to hear kick the bitch down man when my when my grandmother's like oh son of i listened to your podcast oh it was very you had the australian fella and it was very <laughs> nice and then you said about hitting your missus in the country <laughs> no <laughs> no that way me um, YouTube, and, that was not me. <laughs> People oh. ate it up. And and back then, I think it was different. Everyone knew it was a joke. And, mm. and I think it was really well received. And it was well received by a bunch of lefties. You know, what's funny is at the time, I considered myself a leftist. I mean, I was anti-government and, and, and we didn't like, at the, I mean, it's nothing in comparison to how it is now, but we didn't like the government. We, did, we didn't like being told what to do. And mm we were lefties you know i was a lefty back then and i guess i'm kind of still left-leaning now you know but the way it is now is really just this is i don't know it's just a whole different yeah thing. it's yeah, probably yeah. a whole other conversation really yeah. but i just remember that i was singing kick the bitch down and i was a lefty and i didn't like the government and i believed in equal rights and i mean i guess i was what you would call a feminist at the time really yeah and i was singing, you know like, kick the bitch and i was singing this song, you know? and 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 that's what it was no one at the time could accuse me of like being a bad person or anything yeah. mm. in between bars of just disgraceful song about a guy fucking his sister or a mule or something <laughs> terrible. and it's like that jim you know he's a good guy <laughs> and that's that's how it was oh, <laughs> good, good times he's got a, he's, he's got a rotten mouth that jim but he's a lovely boy he's got a he'll rotten mouth lawn. he'll mow your lawn yeah, yeah he'll mow your lawn yeah he just yeah, won't yeah. He just yeah. won't do anything to your sisters. Mm. Yeah, just, yeah. Well, you know what? You know what you were saying before about politics? It's kind of... So, when... How I... For everyone out there, how I discovered James Matthew comedy um, and, and also the huge country star. Boy, did we not know about that. <laughs> Emily and our research team is about to lose her job. But, so... So it's kind of creepy how it came to be me, me discovering you, James, right? So I have a friend with the same name as you. His name is Matthews. Yours is Matthew, I believe, because Hamish keeps saying it. James yeah, right. Matthew is right. his Matthews. Anyway, I like I've, I was friends with him in school. And I, I thought about, I was like, oh, I wonder what he's up to these days. And you know, when you're having a little, little Instagram stalk of people in your past. And yeah. you just, you know, wonder what they're up to these days. And you're scrolling and you're looking. And I was like, fuck, he's changed. <laughs> and it, I was like, and he lives in Australia. And he's a comedian. Different guy. <laughs> anyway, I was like doing like, have you watched You? I was like, Penn Badley and You. Hello, You. I see you there. <laughs> How are you doing comedy? I see you there. Ooh, you want yeah. me to look at your Instagram, don't you, James <laughs> Matthews Comedy? And then the like the first thing I looked at, was you doing the bit about how you voted Labour just yeah. because they were giving you they were giving you muffins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So oh, that's man. literally, man, that's literally how <laughs> I, I like came across you. Yeah. And then you know, obviously, 
my fandom has gone even further with listening to your podcast. Yeah, cool. Beer Shark, and obviously, man, man, having you on, this is this is awesome. So tell us, tell us how you got into comedy. Yeah, so, <laughs> well, I got, you know, people kept saying it to me, Jack. People kept saying, man, you should do stand-up. Mm. I hadn't listened to a lot of stand-up. My, my stand-up experience was kind of limited to, like, Eddie Murphy, because Delirious was was still amazing just, yeah it's yeah. it is now i mean i suppose it's it's aged a lot in the last 10 15 years yeah but i grew up with it and i fucking loved it and to me it was hilarious and you didn't it was so famous it was so big that you didn't have to be into stand up to be exposed to it mm. you're gonna listen to it it's just one of the cool things that you're gonna hear whether you like it or not one of your mates is gonna put that on and you know i mean like, like i said i grew up an hour south of Brisbane and I was exposed to it. Mm, and yeah. we don't really think of that in, in like international terms, but that you've got to be pretty fucking big. If, you know, 13 year olds, you know, an hour south of Brisbane are listening to your shit, you know, the mm. massive star. Yeah. And we loved it because it was disgusting, but I didn't think that I liked stand up. I thought Eddie Murphy was great. I didn't yeah. even think it was a thing. It just seemed like this one off thing. It's like, well, that guy's funny. And that was yeah. kind of it. Yeah. But people kept saying to me, especially when I was doing the OK Cowboys thing, man, you should do stand-up. And my, I had close friends, I suppose, that I would speak to like one-on-one, -on -one, like as mates who might not have sort of seen me on stage and put two and two together, who were massive stand-up fans. I had mates who were massive stand-up fans, but it's sort of like my mates who were into video games. They go on and on about video games. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to play video games. You know? I don't give a fuck. It's like, okay, fucking Zelda. Okay, cool. Nice tune. Yeah. You like what you like. Yeah, and, and, I don't, and I don't sort of give a fuck. They're just like, you should do stand-up. I'm like, yeah, man, fuck yeah, cool. You should do math. You know, it's good too. You know, don't so I never really sort of thought about it until I started listen, like listening to stand-up. Mm. And then I just totally fell in love with it. And I started doing a few small shows around Brisbane and everyone was mean as fuck. It was just mean as fuck. Comedians are terrible people. I'm pretty well adjusted. Like my parents are still- Sorry, man. Can you, know, you can you say, sorry, bro. Yeah, can you, you say that cool. again? It just cut out. Oh, that's cool. No. So just, when you started doing shows. Yeah. Yeah. So when I started doing shows in Brisbane, it was, everyone was fucking pretty like mean, like, it was nasty and it's still nasty. Like comedians are the worst people you'll meet. Like they're, they're pretty fucking horrible. Most of them have like really bad personal problems and I can't relate because I just can't, like my parents are still together and <laughs> I had my university paid for. <laughs> I was told in high school, you can go to uni. It's already paid for Jim. You know, I didn't go. I wasted their money, <laughs> but I could have gone. So in a way, like, so other people are just like, oh, I never got, I never went to uni. I could never afford it. And I'm just like, I never went to uni. It couldn't be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> when you, when you tell them that story, they get quite angry. Yeah. People, people then, don't seem to like the idea no, of you having no, infinite no, amounts of wealth, not using it. Yeah. It's that whole privilege thing. Mm. It's that whole privilege thing, <laughs> uh, which I have, uh, obviously, which is fantastic when it's yours. Yeah, um, and, but when you have privilege you're not meant to admit it because it makes you look bad you're meant to pretend you don't have privilege and then complain about others that do and uh, sort of exalt yourself and sort of and sort yeah. of wash yourself clean of the privilege is the trick but i've just kind of never done it i've embraced it because it's just the truth and i yeah. think if you have advantage you're it's such a, it's so fucking dog eat dog this world if you've got privilege grab it with both hands and be a good person with it. Like if you've got privilege, that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, like be a good person. Like that's good. And yeah. the, the idea that privilege is bad, I think comes from people with really negative attitudes that, are, that suppose that if you have privilege, you're some sort of a bad person or that the people with privilege must be bad mm. as a result of the privilege. It's not true. I would, I would like to cut in there here and just say I've heard a lot of people complain about privileges that they don't have, but no one will ever complain about their own. <laughs> no one's walking no, around saying, no, they won't, oh, they, no. my privilege. That's right. No, they won't complain about their privilege. They'll deny it. Yeah. Like it's some sort of bad thing. Yeah. And, but, I, and, and I just don't. I never have. I've always been like, yeah, look, I've got privilege. It's been fantastic. Uh, I'd like to thank mum. 
she was she was the best bloody hotel I've ever stayed in. Look, Five star if, reviews. <laughs> Nine months terrible, have stayed in there. Look, if she could have cooked better, pretty bad at cooking, and I think she had plenty of time to learn. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. it wasn't. If I had one complaint, it would be the, the continuous cycle of chili con carne. Give up on it. It's not good. Stop. <laughs> it's not chili. Stop. It's Stop. not chili. It's not chili. No. It's not chili, Mo. But you know, you know what you were saying there about the privilege thing. Like, yeah, us being three white males. Yeah, we Twice. don't know no, about the no, world, man. No, and to be born, to be born in the West, in like wealthy countries, we ain't got a fucking clue what it's yeah, like yeah, out yeah. there, no, man. But that's so much part of it, Joe. The, the, Jack. That's so. That's such a big part of it, though. Mm. You don't. You don't have to be smart. There's this weird thing. This is, I find this so strange, this idea that you have to be smart. Can't I just be a dumb, can't I just be like a fucking happy idiot? Why yeah. do I, like, provide, like, oh, well, you have to provide links to the information. To get, no, 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 I, I know I'm full of shit. My <laughs> life is good and I'm happy and it's fine. Yeah. You don't have it. I'm just talking bullshit. I'm happy. I go on a jet ski. I drive. I have a jet ski. I've got two. I only need one, but I thought I'd get two in case one breaks. Then I would have the other one. And I don't. Yeah, that is privilege. Yeah, but I'm that cool. With, yeah, but I'm cool with it because That's jet ski privilege. Yeah, but the thing is, it's not as much fun as I thought it would be, and now they're taking up space. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so I had to extend where, the garage. Where, I had to get a bigger your, garage. Where'd you, where'd you put your Bentley now? They like can't. Why well, don't yeah. I? I do have cars, but I don't keep them at my house because I I like to live like right in town. So yeah. I don't really have because I have like I've got a double garage, but because I'm in New Farm, I'm right in the middle of the city, and I don't have a lot of space because I want to live right in the space. So I've got money, but not enough money to have a massive <laughs> garage. So I rent space for the cars. So I have. Yeah. Another garage that's got the cars, yeah. which cost me cost me money, but the joy of the cars, uh, it's what keeps you in the game. <laughs> you gotta put them somewhere, you know, Jack. You I'm, got just, to, I'm just imagine some you some fucker. You know, that, uh, that, that, someone's on the bus. Someone's on the bus listening to this right now, yeah. going wanker. When, <laughs> it's when probably I, it's Jack, probably my grandmother. <laughs> Jack, when I hear about homelessness. When I hear about homelessness, it's fucking hard and it's so yeah. nasty. And I just think, fuck, especially on the cold nights. And I think, man, you could just fucking let them sleep in one of your cars. Or just fill you, just let, you could probably fit three homeless in a car. That's mm. what's that, like fucking 15 homeless I could put in a, for the night. But I don't it's trust good. them. <laughs> 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 so generous. I don't, because they might. And it's not because they guys steal it because you know I've got the keys or anything, but they're just going to mess it up. <laughs> and in an ongoing way, it's not really my responsibility. It's going to drain me dry over time. I want to yeah. help them. Yeah, you know, I want to help. Yeah, I don't mean. let them sleep in your car. They'll only use that as an opportunity to buy meth. <sighs> They'll shit in your car and spill Benadryl. That's <laughs> yeah, it's the Benadryl you need. To... Benadryl stains ruined Bentleys. You know what it does? Urine destroys the stitching in the leather on the seats. Oh, do, do you know that from away, experience? Yes. Urine eats away the stitching. And you know what too, look- bile, it eats away the stitching. You know what I'm looking forward to to now? Like after after you've said that, if you don't I, I'm just I'm I'm now the I'm comments. Just, I'm just setting it. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, that's gonna be fun as well. But I'm looking forward to the to the day in the future when when i hear one of these really super pc individuals having this chat and just talking about it and i see their car 20 meters away and they're talking about how how you know homelessness and you know how horrible it is and just saying well right. give me your car <laughs> you care so much yeah. <laughs> you should part with all your material possessions until you don't feel guilty anymore <laughs> But the thing Give him your car. Give him your car. Take the baby seat. Take the baby seat out the car and give him your car. Oh Oh, my god. The thing about it is, like, they say that, oh, James, like, like, you know, what I've said is, which is obviously fucking bogus. You know, I rent. You know, but it's a funny idea. And uh, (laughs) I. 
<laughs> and I've always just sort of said things to piss people off. But I think it's just like an ongoing sort of joke that if you are in any way privileged, it's important to feel a lot of guilt. And I, I just, I don't believe that. I don't yeah. think that's true at all. Mm. I, I, you know, because I feel a lot of guilt and none of it's about my privilege. It's all about the terrible things I've done. Yeah. Can I you just know, like, say to you, like, I'm just having a thought, which, how many individuals were complaining to you about uni in Australia being like too expensive? Like, like yeah. isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't it free if you... No, you know, you just get it on the med, you just get it on the hex and worry about it later, kind of thing. Hmm. That doesn't make it free. That makes it like that makes it like if you're serious about making a go of it, of your life, then you're going to have to pay for it. But I know what you're saying. What you're saying is, if I want to spend four years learning something, and then just go and die in a gutter or spend the rest of my life on, you know, settling and achieve nothing, then it's free but your whole life sucks so it's not free if you're actually it's sort of this this government's you know I, i'm no fan of the current government or any government but i just think that it's an interesting setup it used to be free and now it's not but this government like many western governments definitely america definitely and i'm sure it's the same in england mm. um punish you for agency but like you get punished if you've got dreams. That's a great way to fucking tax you. Like if you if you dream of something bigger, if you if you'd like to be successful in your life, that's the lever. I mean, that's the lever to squeeze you. Mm. Like if I've got a job, right? Like say I've got a full time job, uh, which I don't because I'm a trust fund baby and who'd work, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but say I've got a job. Let's pretend I've got a full time job. Let's pretend right? you're you're like a normal human being, right? Yeah, and yeah. not and right. Not, but, and not just fucking rich from country music money. <laughs> Fell in underpants at the road show down in Sydney, down and down, down, down the Fremantle Hotel. Oh. Right. So let's just pretend for a second that I'm not cashed up <laughs> from the, all, the, all the royalties from I Can Smell Your Country. <laughs> um, if I just had a regular job, right? If I just had a regular job and then, and then uh, I decided, oh, you know what? I'm a fucking go-getter. I'm going to go take this other part-time job. Better yet, I'm going to start a business and uh and i'm gonna work part-time in this business on top of my full-time hours uh you know because i'm a go-getter i'd like to own a house and i'm on i'm on medium wage and it's so hard to buy a house i'd like to buy a property i'd like to be happy the government will tax me at 50 percent for that second position so they are very much against you trying to get ahead mm. i mean that says a lot about a country's policy about people trying to improve their position or get better mm. they don't want you encroaching on on the sort of one percent like if you live in australia and you live in a house and you have a car you're in the top three percent of the wealth in the whole world yeah you, yeah you are. you are but if you dare to try to get in the two percent mm. the boot of the one percent will fucking smash you yeah and, and it's sort of taboo to complain about it because you are in the top 3%. So if you're like, oh, this fucking life's unfair. And uh, fucking, I was really upset today. I couldn't ride my jet ski because um, of the sadness. <laughs> sadness, man. You know, had a shit day on the jet ski. Couldn't stop thinking about how I'm fucking held back. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a difficult whinge. Yeah. Had know? to take my so- jet ski to the, I had to take my jet ski to the shops because all the two homeless fell asleep in my car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I ran my fucking jet ski into the rocks. I had to ride the, I had to ride the second one. I had to ride the spare. spare. Pull, out, pull out the spare. Couldn't afford to fix the second jet ski. It's just for me in case. Yeah, yeah. You know, so there's a real taboo about mm. making any sort of complaints. You're meant to be guilty, and you, you're mm. not allowed to sort of whinge. But there's plenty to whinge about. Yeah, it's not anyone yeah. else who's doing it. You know, it's sort mm. of being like. But I think. You might not want to say that. You might not want to suggest that you're in any way oppressed. That I think, would be kind of disgusting if you said that. <laughs> I, yeah, I, th- I think know? the one percent, you know, the the three percent thing about like getting ahead. I think that does a hundred percent apply because if you think about becoming a first time home buyer, right? How hard that is, and it's the yeah. same. It's the same at home. It's like fucking impossible. And then. 
like where where I live in the area, I'm not gonna give the address out because there's some freaks out there. But if you want to send me out, anything, you want to send me anything, just send it to the Instagram and I'll get it eventually. Um, the the problem is like where I live, so they're raising the rent, right? Because they can't. Covid's gone now. The rent's going up, baby. Everybody want to yeah. get paid. And yeah, I was yeah. talking to like the the letting agents, and they were like, oh. They were like, oh, they're not going to move on it. They've got like 16 of these properties. That's their job. You can't be a professional fucking landlord. That's not a job. Uh... So we can't buy houses because people own lots of fucking houses. 16. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. you're in any time you, you're when you're saying, you know, 3% to the 2% mm. or whatever, you're literally encroaching on. And a lot of it, like in the UK, the House of Lords or the like his lordship from the House of whatever, right? They're all right. just billionaires who get given yes. oh yeah. you're a billionaire, yeah. you can yeah. make decisions for poor people. If you oh, yeah. you've if, been so generous yeah. with your billions. If you wanna if you wanna get a real clear yeah. picture of it, and I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's I, crazy though. It's yeah. it's like it's fucking they're like, oh, no, geez. no, you'll get you'll get there eventually if your parents are rich, but if not, you've got to wait. Google mm. Google yeah. average wage in Australia, and that tells the story because the average wage is like eighty eight thousand a year. Mm. And that tells a story about how much wealth the the, the one percent have to yeah. make that average eighty eight grand a year. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. average wage is eighty eight grand a year. That's not the average full time wage. Yeah. That's yeah. per capita. Yeah. The average of a person who has a job is eighty eight thousand. Yeah. That means that some fuckers are getting eight hundred thousand a year, and there's enough of them to bring the average yeah. wage up to. Eight. I don't make eighty eight thousand. <laughs> I've been, I'm a professional person. Yeah. You know, I don't make that. So it gives you like it gives you reference. It's like mm. it's not like they're oh those people make more than us, dude. So much more that it would blind you. Like if you saw the number, if you saw how they live, yeah. you just wouldn't even have time to be angry. You'd just be like, oh, what? <laughs> two <laughs> jet skis, two jet skis. Ah, he's got, he's got 12, reckon, like, 12 jet skis. I got 12 fucking jets. Ah! Do you reckon, like, do you reckon, you reckon that, uh, oh, like, man. you know, you can you complain about having two jet skis and, you know, old the mate in the 1% is coming home to his wife and go, honey, oh, I got a blister today counting all the money. <laughs> <laughs> You know, exactly. but yeah, but yeah, man, they're out there. They're out there. And you know, I, I guess it's more, probably more than I'm old than anything, but mm. I mix with these because I am right in town, you know, so I, I mix with some of these folks, you know, I got a couple of mates who are doctors and lawyers and, you know, things like that. Mostly who I've met, these are not like my age old friends. These are mostly people I've met through comedy. When you're in stand up and, you know, you guys speak to um, Dave and I guess other comics that are maybe more prolific and, uh, more successful um, and and you know and in that way probably more irritated because when you're prolific or when you're doing a lot of shows you meet more of these people and you know millionaires are they're no different to anyone else they have things that they like and they have people that they respect for their different things that they do if, if mm. you're a, if you're a millionaire it doesn't mean that you're you know that you don't like stand up or that you don't like it as not as much as someone else these people will approach you after gigs and be like hey man you fucking come over to the crib and you know, have a beer sometime and you might you might be stupid enough to do that and it turns into an absolute wank fest over at their house where they're showing you the jet skis and they're you know and this is really annoying um if they're not a doctor or mm. if they're not a, a, a you know a pricey mm. lawyer it's very annoying because you sort of normal people have a tendency to want to know where it all came from yeah and the yeah. answer to that question can be very fucking not annoying upsetting when they just yeah. go well well nothing man really i just you know it's just how it is right you know what i mean i'm like no yeah. i fucking actually don't know what you mean <laughs> yeah yeah what no the... tell me where the fuck you what got this money from. Fuck do you man i'm i met this guy in brisbane and you know we went back to his place and i was really not this is um pre-covid because i'm mates with him on instagram through the covid phase i'm seeing him go to places internationally when no one mm. else can sort of leave yeah, the country yeah. and he's visiting you know he's off to hungary and he's going to these sort of and i was like how the you know i sent him a message i'm like how'd you 
fucking manage that? And he's like, oh, it's just part of being one of the few. It's like, oh, I hate you heaps. What a piece <laughs> of shit <laughs> thing to say. You know, part of being one of the few, mate. You know what I like? Sounds like he's like the Illuminati or something. Yeah, sounds, that. sounds like an awesome. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> find out where he lives and post poop through his letterbox. <laughs> no, I know where he lives. That's the worst so thing. Been, been that's there, the yeah. worst thing. You can't miss it. It's got a helipad on the roof. <laughs> The, uh, way, yeah. the worst thing about that and, and with COVID was the whole, oh, so the Kardashians are just on a private plane on a private didn't island. It, didn't it fucking, oh, didn't and, it? And you're, and you're literally yeah. like, oh, so you, you fuckers can do what, even like, so when you, you could start to travel again at home um, and, you, you know, like going abroad and whatever. And is, is it my microphone that's really muffling? Are you are you are you pooping away I'm not there? Moving, I'm not are moving. you pooping to put it through his house? Stop pooping, I'm right? No, but the problem with like so when people are going on holiday and then you have to pay like a hundred pounds for a COVID test to go somewhere, people haven't got fucking money like that nah. to, to bear. But rich nah. fuckers do. Yeah, you know you've got to be in business class to guarantee you'll be on a plane. Yeah. Rich fuckers can. So yeah. it's like they went global pandemic. Yeah, rich people, you'll we'll see you soon. Poor yeah. people, <laughs> wait yeah, your fucking turn. What's, what, what's interesting wait about your that turn. is what's interesting about that is is that that was also going on pre-COVID. So the luxury mm. tax, luxury tax is nothing new. Yeah, um, the luxury tax is nothing new, um, but in this case, it's being used to separate people who are worth facilitating for and people yeah. who are not worth facilitating for because you know it costs these companies more to make these things happen. If you've got shitloads of flights going out of Brisbane, it's easy to take care of VIPs because you have the, you have the finances to do that because you're making mm. heaps of money because you're all these plebs and yeah. cattle class. You know, yeah. if you don't take care of those VIP members in tough times, they won't be there later and they make so much money off them that they have to kind of facilitate that travel or do what they can for them. You know, so the, the luxury tax is nothing new. If anything, companies have had to bite the bullet and 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 create these business class flights, which they may have even taken a loss on at this time, just mm. to take care of people, to keep them at Qantas or keep them at whatever, to keep them at Emirates, to keep them on board. Because if you can't fly them, someone else will. And you can bet your ass there's a business class yeah. customer. Yeah. If they go to Emirates instead of Qantas, Emirates is gonna is gonna make a move on that customer to keep them. Yeah. Man, that's a really that's a really interesting take on that. I haven't thought about that. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, they have, I mean, they uh, Qantas definitely took huge losses creating flights for their VIP business class passengers uh, to not lose that custom in at this time, and mm. that that to me speaks to an elite class, and I think that consumers have never been treated so badly i mean i go to places and i'm like and i i mean anything from like a restaurant to a fucking you know one of these fancy boutique build your own pants places that i go to a thousand dollar pair of pants because i'm fucking like that you know when i go in there and i'm getting treated bad you know they treat me bad but <laughs> on a serious note but on a serious note on a serious note you know i think that uh, customer service has never been so fucking bad like people are mm. not being treated well you know, and I'm old as shit, so I remember when people, when your money meant something and people didn't want you to leave. Mm. And now it's like there's so much wealth and there are so much people who have incredible wealth that they're being treated very, very different. And we're seeing the divide more and more. And I think it makes sense that we're seeing the divide first yeah. in the commercial space. Because that's know, where you're going to see it, right? That's where you'll see it. You know, when you say the world, it's uh, like the customer service, yeah, customer service being so bad. Do you think it because it was always like we everyone was brought up with the customer is always right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and then and then Karen would say, "Hold on a minute, I and my <laughs> mom my mom actually sounds like this, and her name is Karen. Hold on a minute, I'm the customer. I want to speak to the manager, right? And now it's went so far the other way. That, yeah. like people in shops just go. Oh fuck off uh, then! No, the customer, <laughs> the customer's fuck always off. annoying. Fuck off then! Get out! No, yeah. your steak's burnt. Well, fuck off! That's well, that's good. the response. Burn it on purpose, bitch! Yeah, yeah. It's you're a rich. fifteen dollar you rump. You're rich, bitch! You're being such a Karen. Yeah. Hey, hey James, you, you know, know what's weird is? Oh, look, look! I I just had one thing before about the about the the, the whole Qantas 
thing that we yeah. were talking about. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> did like, you know, I think the business class is that, you know, is a real like 2%, 3% problem, yeah. you know, because yeah. Qantas got rid of all their old planes and the 1% bought them during the time of lockdown. Like a lot of people now have private um, recommissioned Boeing 747s for their personal, you know, overseas charter ready to go. Absolutely, man. Um, and uh, insane. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, no, don't. Yeah, no, just right. I was just trying to get in there, and I was like, oh fuck. You just because <laughs> because I get I get carried away. You wanted it to be known that you've just bought a new one, haven't you? Yeah, With the, the Patreon the money, moments. guys, it's time for a little advert now. We're gonna have a break, <laughs> and then we'll get back to it, and we'll be telling everybody about James Matthew comedy. And what he's up to these days. We'll have a little break. All right. All right. Hey, Mish, you want to do the Patreon ad? I'm going to have a pee. All no right. Uh... And I need a little refreshment. Not of pee, just, just water. I've stopped drinking, James, and it's the shittest thing ever. You're a good man, dude. That's what you're meant to do. I'm, I'm meant to stop, but I... I, I well, that was the thing. I was, it's, it was my birthday the other day. I know, happy birthday. Thank you. But it, like the other day, I was like... That's it. Not drinking anymore. Yeah. Not, and then I was driving home today and I was like, I love beer, beer. Who love beer? I love beer. And, uh, and I, can't, seat, I can't because yeah. I promised Hamish. Yeah, oh, we, really? made a, we made a deal. We're not drinking for 12 months. I don't know yeah. how. We're going to try make the podcast there. really good. Uh, I'll see you in a minute. Yeah, all good. <laughs> hey, James, oh, you, before, earlier on as well today, we are talking about um, the, you know, the 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 change of the world and you were talking about like i'm I, i'm born in 1999 so i'm like the last last of the 90s but my my childhood was growing up watching you know left wing stuff at the time which was con- was south park which was considered left wing yeah. men yeah yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah definitely and raised up to just laugh and challenge opinions and and all of a sudden like even i rewatched the Chappelle show the other day the you know the really early the skit one and it made me laugh so hard. And I was just yeah. like, could never happen again. And so Chappelle show, right? Equal parts um, comedy genius and actually legitimately shocking. Yeah. Um, shocking, um, I guess, like, like statements, like sh- shocking, not shocking message. Because I think, so if you look at the Chappelle show, right? And you look at the message, that's still pretty pure. And actually, quite a left-wing opinion yeah, that's, yeah. that's sort of coming through. Um, but the vehicle is shocking. Yeah. It's like, whoa, you're, like, the way it gets to its message is completely inappropriate, un-PC, definitely not okay. Um, so my argument with Chappelle's show is, I guess, the leftist approach that things are a means to an end. Like... There are all these times when political people, whether it be left wing, white, right wing, whoever you are, you'll tell some enormous lie or even a small gaffe, but you'll tell a lie because it's for the greater good. Like, yeah. because you believe in your cause, it's okay to sort of bridge this gap of truth because it leads to a place where we get to a more virtuous re- resolution. Yeah. But with Chappelle's show, because that gap or that vehicle is so non-PC that it's cut down. And that's even with a left-wing agenda, even with a leftist resolve or leftist resolution or leftist message, it just goes too far. And whether you're on the right or the left, um, you're always sort of pointing the finger at the other side saying, well, that's a lie, that's a lie. That's a lie. And there's enough lies on both sides to really justify discrediting either one. Yeah. Like at any time, either side, the left or the right, could be completely discredited just on the basis of truth. Yeah. This is massive fucking lies. Yeah. On both sides, <laughs> just massive fucking lies all the time. All yeah. the time. <laughs> right? So it's just all bullshit. Chappelle is absolutely incredible, but I didn't like his last special yeah. because of the trans thing. Was it Sticks and Stones as last special? No, I like I liked Sticks and Stones. I really enjoyed Sticks and Stones. But his most recent one, Chappelle's most recent special, 
was this kind of almost an hour of response to him being attacked over his comments about trans people. Mm. And I, I, I have seen that. It's his, it's his final one, isn't it? It's like the well, final it's, one. It's of not the... really final. No, He's been yeah. signed up for three more. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Chappelle, Chappelle finally wants that big money again. You're right. <laughs> but the thing about it that I don't like, the thing about it that I don't like isn't that it's anti-trans because it's comedy, so I don't really care that much about a message. Like, my stand-up doesn't have a message. It's just, mm. I just say things that I think are funny. I'm not... I didn't dislike Chappelle's last special because it felt unnecessarily cruel to trans people. I didn't like it because it wasn't good stand-up. Yeah. And it wasn't a positive message and it was overshadowed by this purpose. Yeah. So I think a good comedian and Chappelle's an incredible comedian he can write jokes about anything and he can fill an hour with just the funniest shit. He's just so fucking talented. Mm. Such an incredible writer and such an incredible performer. And I think he's just kind of allowed himself to get sucked into this argument and out of his clouded brain with this silly argument that he's in, he's created an hour of substandard material and it's just not particularly good. Mm. My, my, I don't dislike it because it's nasty to anyone. I, don't really care because I judge people on the basis of their behavior and I don't know David Chappelle. Yeah. You know, I fucking have no idea. I assume what he's saying, he's saying because he thinks it's funny and that's where he loses points because yeah. that's his comedy special. Well, it's not mm. very good, Dave. Well, it's just not very good, Dave. <laughs> you know, like, it's just not very good. It's just nowhere near as good as your other shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I can't wait for his next special to be about us <laughs> bitching about <laughs> <some> bad, <laughs> bad, bad, <laughs> these fucking bricks. <laughs> right. All I want to say is right is those guys on West Underground <laughs> and James James Matthew. Right. Shitting that on guy. Me. That shit guy on shitting on me. I'm from Washington <laughs> D.C. This is where I'm from. <laughs> but I think it's, it speaks to a, it speaks to purpose, right? Like so. so yeah. What's your purpose? This is obviously the funniest shit you can come up with. Mm. Well, Dave, that's not particularly funny. And you got sucked into an argument and, yeah. then you, and then you stand up, took a dive because you got sucked into an argument. And that just goes to show that it doesn't matter which sort of hemisphere you hail from. Mm. If you're obsessed with a point, it might really take away from what's funny because yeah. now you're about something and mm. good comedy isn't about something. It's about being funny. You have to be funny. Also, <laughs> like, be... go on, Hamish. Sorry, mate. Sorry, Jack. I just, this this is the, you know, where I wanted to lead to. Is it a good thing if you're a comedian in this world, in this, you know, time to be cancelled in a way? Because, you know, if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're not Dave Chappelle, and I'll give you an example of why, you know, I wanted to, like, you know, to, to kind of bring this up and take this direction is because, like, I've, you know, we're, our our main form platform that we put our podcast on is 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 YouTube, and you know all the audio all the audio um, you know uh, distributors we put it on there as well. But it's not as it's not our bread and butter, which YouTube is. And when you you know I watch other you know comedians and especially pay attention, and Isaac Butterfield and you know people people like him and his caliber. You know every time they go after Isaac Butterfield, I watch. The sub count and it is massive yeah. by them going after him and 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 slamming him in the media and saying all this horrible yeah. shit about him they're making yeah. him fucking mil, uh, you know multi-millionaire yeah and and my and you, you, i make 100 percent. and the funny thing about that is he's not that good yeah <laughs> because he's because he's got a bunch of people he's got a, he's got a massive following of people who are just obtuse they're just fed up with cancel culture they're annoyed at the woke and so they follow him because they see him as some sort of bastion of righteousness that's anti the stuff that they don't like. So it's sort of like they're kind of jumping on this train, you know, and it's totally political, which means yeah. that if they're like, if you like a person because it's political, then their art is kind of obsolete. Their art yeah. kind of doesn't matter because you only support them because of their beliefs and who they are, maybe. And, and Dave Chappelle was hated for a long time regardless of how good he was as a comic because people didn't like his beliefs. But I saw his last special and I was like, well, that really was not that good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as someone who tries to be honest and truthful, because you got to yeah. fucking, you got to hold the faith, man. Like yeah. I, got, I got two jet skis and a fucking, I got to uphold the fucking righteousness. 
I'm sort of like, well, you know, that really wasn't that good. And I'd be a phony if I said that it was, but it's got mm. nothing to do with making fun of anyone. It's just mm. that, well, that wasn't particularly funny because you, you made it political and that's just not that fucking funny. You know, mm. I, um, I've had, I've been cancelled, man. I've been cancelled up here in Brisbane. I mean, I had a guy make up some terrible, nasty stories about me and uh, I confronted him about it, you know, and uh, it was, the story was that um, there was this female comic who's a great friend of mine and, you know, we had a bit of a romance or whatever. He didn't know about the romance, mm. but he had the hots for it. But he didn't know because I'm a gentleman. I keep my shit to myself. Mm. Apparently, so, yeah. Well, in this regard. Oh, okay. And I'm not going okay. to name names. Don't but, you know, and tell. Yeah, go on, I, Mom. No, absolutely, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But she kind of did, and, and that's her business. But I hold myself to whatever standard. <laughs> so, you know, we're going out and whatever. It's cool. And yeah. uh, she, she's an open micer, and uh, she performed at this show. I performed at the show, too. And uh, I, the story is now, I, I left her at the gig. That's what happened. But the story is that I went to give her a lift home. Keep in mind, she lives in totally like the other direction to me. Mm. She lives out at the bay and I live in the city. But this dude's story is that I gave her a lift home. But instead of taking her back to her house, I took her back to my house and then kind of put the hard word on it. What's irritating about the story is that even in the story, I'm not really a bad guy. <laughs> like in the story, I take her back to my house instead of taking her to her house. I put the hard word on her. She doesn't like that. She feels threatened by that. And then I'm not sure what happens. I don't know if she catches an Uber or if I end up driving her home. Can't remember. But that's his story. What he didn't realize is I'm terrific friends with this girl. Mm. And obviously she didn't like that he made up this story either. It annoyed her. But he just didn't count on us actually being friends. So then, But it also didn't stop him from like spreading it around and causing all this shit. You guys know Lewis Spears, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. who's a mate of mine great comic very successful youtube guy and uh and i've worked with him a bit um and you know we're mates like you know we get along we have a similar sense of humor big youtube guy his stand-up leaps and bounds he's just gotten better and better you know he's just gotten better and better so i opened for him years ago on the gold coast and in brisbane and his recent run through town he asked me if i'd open for him two sold out shows at the state library in Brisbane. I was like, mm. fuck yeah, dude, of course, of course I'll do it. <laughs> Amen. Uh, oh, fuck yeah, of course. And uh, Samuel Badry as well. Um, shout out to Samuel Badry. He's a great up and coming comic from Brisbane and, and he joined us and it was just a fucking great show. But the show almost didn't happen because he called me on the morning of the first show and was like, hey man, I've heard this story. What's the go? Jesus. And yeah. I'm just like, oh, yeah, uh, I was like, yeah, no, the, the, the story has circulated. It's been, it has been a problem for me because this fuckwit has gone up to Cairns and told the story and I've had, you know, and I've worked in Cairns, so I know the promoters and stuff up there. Mm. So I'm getting phone calls from them going, hey, man, this guy's coming up here talking some shit. I'm like, oh, yeah, that guy, you know, and, and he's gone down to Sydney and Melbourne. He's spreading this bullshit. And it's, it's very frustrating. Um, but I was able to say to Lewis, oh, yeah, look, and I asked him if the I asked him about the woman in the story, her name, and he's like, "Yep, that's the name." I'm like, "Great, I'm gonna have her send you a message, give you a call, whatever it takes." Because lucky for me, she happens to be a great friend of mine. Mm. Fucking, how bad would it be if this person was just even just a fake person, even just a person who didn't exist? Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I, I would have no. It's lucky for me that my <laughs> my enemy is a fucking complete moron and has yeah. chosen someone that I've you know that's a, like a friend. So anyway, I spoke to. The, did the, did the, this yeah. did this story start coming out around like after that show was announced? Before, is he okay. a comedian as well? Yes. Yeah, man. Oh, this is what no. I was saying. I mean, this is what I was saying in the first part of the show. Like, these people have been cruel to me, man. Mm. Like, cruel in a way that I could never have been prepared for. The whole cancel culture and the wokeness and the thing. I'm not prepared for it because. I just say if I like something or I don't like it and I try not to be political. I try to see the left and the right as just sort of adverse and mm. both willing to be trickery and bullshit and lies and cloak and dagger and dodgy as each other. I'm probably a left-leaning centrist mm. in as much as I see snot and bullshit everywhere. I think both sides have a point here and there. And they're both completely nonsensical and insane yeah. here and there. 
but I'm not willing to sort of pick a side. I say I'm left leaning because I just believe in, in, I guess, equalness and treating people mm. fairly. And that might be something that public opinion seems to decide that's more of a, a leftist idea. So mm. I would always I would sort of err that side, but it's not from pressure. It's just maybe how I feel. But I mean, I'm right here because I just see nonsense everywhere. Anyway, so Lewis calls me. He's like, this is bullshit. Uh, he's like, man, I've got to take care of myself. I'm an up and comer. I got, yeah. Yeah. and I was just like, dude, I'm going to get this girl to give you a buzz, to message you first so you can see it's legitimately her. And then she's going to call you. Is that cool? He was like, man, if you can clear it up, obviously I want you on the gig. Great. Uh, and I, <laughs> it took me like an hour to get in touch with her. And I'm just like, like this is money. I mean, this is how I make money. Mm. I'm just like, oh, well, I, I finally get on to her. I tell her what's happened. She's like, oh, of course, no worries. She messages him um, and it's cool. He rings me up. He's like, I spoke to her. I said, hey, man. You know, and he's like, I hope you understand. Like, this is just the world now. I was like, I fucking totally get it, man. It's totally cool. We went and did the show. Two sold out uh, nights, State Library, South Bank, Brisbane. Fucking insane. Fucking insane. I mean, uh, I don't know if you guys know Lewis, but uh, he's he's got like fucking rappers turning up backstage. Yeah. And all these, yeah, man, all these like YouTube people i don't mm. it's, what's funny is like i'm i'm in the green room at the gig both nights meeting people mm. i don't know who the fuck they are i'm i'm a, I'm a dinosaur i don't know hey, man, you know, <laughs> and i find out later on like oh this this guy's got mm. fucking hit, you know six you know six hundred thousand followers on this and that and i'm like oh fuck, that's because cool. he's because lewis is part of like a youtube culture yeah mm. big time know, which is incredibly success incredibly successful he yeah. moved, he 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 couldn't tour out of Melbourne, so he moved to Tasmania during COVID, so he could get to Brisbane and do this gig. Like <laughs> the mean, like the yeah, he has the means, and the means comes yeah. from his success yeah. in the industry. Very fucking cool. But it's it's it, the, the 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 weird thing is it's it's different because they like I I see this this the big three right there's friendly Geordie. Um, yeah. Isaac Butterfield and Lewis, they're all in that, they're, you know, yeah. they're, the, they're, the, they're the big three, but they've kind of made their, their own way almost, you know, they've parved this, this, this like really yeah. unconventional new path, which is... Isn't it interesting that, the, so the three that you've mentioned, I would say are all, well, none of those three are apolitical. None of those are without politics, and all of them tend to lean away from wokeness, away from political correctness. Like mm. if we think about it, if we think about it, right? And how much of that rejection? Because I honestly feel like leftism and feminism, um, as cultures, not as beliefs, not as ideals, but as cultures, are kind of almost symbols of authority and mediocrity. Yeah. Nothing fun happens over there. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not fun. You can't break the rules over there. Mm. You can't break, like, nothing. So if you can't break the rules, nothing's fun. Nothing's funny. Like, there's something I, I read in, about comedy. When I first started comedy, I read this quote, and I can't remember who said it, but it might be some old Jewish guy, probably like a like an L.A. Jewish writer, probably, because I was reading a lot, um, reading a lot about Mel Brooks and, and, and what comedy is because I, I'm kind of OCD and I just dive in and I never want to be, ba- I always want to be great at whatever I'm doing. That's, mm. that's across the board. I've always. Mel, Mel Brooks is a good place to, to learn as well, man. Absolutely. If you're talking about successful. Writers, yeah, that's, that's good. That's yeah. good fucking learning tree to try and get under. Yeah. So it might've, it might've been something that he said, um, but he talked about like sacrificing society's sacred cow. Mm. And that if you're unwilling to sacrifice the community's sacred cow in the name of comedy, then you'll never be great. Mm. Yeah. So he talked about, and I, and I shouldn't, I don't want to misquote Mel Brooks, but it was some, it was one of these guys, one of these LA writers, probably. Um, but the idea of, yeah, sacrificing the sacred cow in a funny way, and the sacred cow might be like wokeness, or it might be. Um, 
I don't fuck, man. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah something, he, something he, that society holds dear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, even religion, religion, religion or yeah. you know, yeah. like in the nineties, definitely in the nineties, people destroyed Christianity and the name yeah. of comedy, yeah. and they all got famous and made a million each, mm. like because that was the sacred cow of the time. Yeah, and now and now it feels like maybe wokeness and 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 maybe feminism maybe is the sacred cow now. And we're seeing three guys. I mean, you've named three guys who've all tackled it, yeah, and and, and are successful. Now, yeah, I'm not saying that's why successful, why they're successful, but I think it's an interesting. Oh know, man, it, it certainly plays a part. And when you when you like, look, I think it it, re, it really comes down to you know going against the loudest voice in the room, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, and and when and especially in this world we live in at the moment, man, where where we're almost ideas that by that by big corporations are almost pushed on us as 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 religion you know you you have to believe in this because if you don't then we're going to almost give you a social credit score in a way we're going to you know make you feel shit on facebook we're going to give shit on social media you won't want to open a phone which is you know this is this is the thinking of ourselves at the moment you know yeah so and then when you have people come against it uh, you know or come you know come just just fucking challenge this bullshit thing that's kind of sparked up in the last five years and and really offer you know a different opinion to it and i yeah i think it just resonates with a lot of people in a different way and that's what comedy's been since the start yeah just yeah. kind of challenging yeah. the big the big ideologies so so to, i totally agree with you man but to add to add to that yeah is the idea or the ideal that it should be reasonable yeah, and mm. that you should be able to prove your point, provide sources, and back it up. Mm. You know, can't I just be full of shit? Yeah, <laughs> like can't I just can't I just can't I just slit the throat of your sacred cow just for fun? Yeah, even, even if I believe in what you're talking about, just for you. Like, well, even if I'm a Christian, yeah. can't I destroy Christianity as a joke? Yeah. As a satellite. Man, I think I, I think a big problem with it, right, is I think Ricky Gervais said this and like he said the problem is everyone's got an opinion or or they think they need to have an opinion on everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think so if you if you done a joke ten years ago, right, about feminist or religion or you know, like any anything, right? Anything taboo, your Unless that's being filmed, right, and it's going to be on your special, you're essentially, you're looking at, say, 200 people in a room, right, and you're seeing what the line is, right, yeah. what is funny, right? Mm -hmm. And if they laugh, then it's funny. It's yeah. a joke, right? And it's jury. a joke. It's, a yeah. joke. it's done. It, in that moment, it's gone. They may remember yeah. it when they go home. Yeah. But you've just tested who they are, and that, that mirror they hold up in front of themselves when they go to watch stand-up or any yeah. performance, really, film or anything, when they put that mirror in front of themselves and then they let it come out, they let the laugh come out, right? The issue yeah. is, with Twitter and Facebook, Mary Ann jumps on a on a Facebook and Twitter yeah. and then can instantly... think about it. Instantly, yeah. he said this. <laughs> They yeah. did that and no context. Prob the the problem, yeah, no context at all. That that's yeah. a big issue. And if you think about comedians, right? And you know, you're the three guys you were talking about, the YouTubers and all that. Joe Rogan was untouchable, right? Until yeah. they found him saying the N-word, right? And they found two minutes of him saying it. And when the rock turns his back on you, that's <laughs> that's when <laughs> you're in shit. <laughs> when the when The Rock says, <coughs> yeah, I smell I what, what you're, you're cooking, cooking and you are, you are done. That's it. Cooking dog That's shit. it. It's like, yeah. there's yeah. only so much you're going to get away with. But yeah. So you've got to be, you can have whatever beliefs you want, man, right? And go against the grain as much as you want. Yeah. But you've got to make sure that is not mm -hmm. a big fucking skeleton line in that yeah, closet. Dude, you, 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 you walk the line. Yeah, you know, yeah. Cool. Johnny Cash, country music, happy people, like you said before. Yeah, man. walk that line, yeah. man. And that's what we're charged with. And that's yeah, what you and that's what you have to it's do. It's a responsibility it, you have, dude. It makes it beautiful. Yeah, and it makes it challenging and exciting, and a, and a, and a good thing to be involved with. Mm. I feel like a, 
We've cut Seamus up. Speak, Seamus. Hamish? Hamish. <laughs> you know what Speak, Hamish. I call him Seamus. He deserves Seamus. that. He I, deserves that. Well, you you said it once during the interview at this at the start. I let it go because I forgot that I, I slipped up on the S at the... At you the, deserve that. <laughs> So I, I let that one go, and then Jack didn't pick up on it, so I just kind of played it off. But I called him Seamus the other week, and I don't think he's forgiven me ever since. <laughs> so I, I kind of thought one for one, one for one. Where, one all, one all. Yeah. Sorry, man. No, no, two for one. That's sorry. Uh, you know, we're good. I'm sorry, Hamish. I'm no, 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 that's all good. You're, you're, you're a guest. <laughs> You're a guest, yeah. You'll just hate uh, me forever. <laughs> do you, do you feel like that responsibility? Is that every time you step on a stage with a microphone no, in front of your no, hand? Man, or do no, you just I, think no, it's it's like... No, no, I don't. It's a bottom line. It's not... No, it's not. You don't have to... Man, you don't have to get on stage and be shocking. You, you mm. don't. And the idea that you do is spread by fucking edgelords and people who don't understand stand-up and, and want to always be shocking or feel that if they're not shocking... They're not entertaining, and that's mm. weak. That's weak stand-up. So that also exists. You don't mm. have to be shocking. You can have well-crafted, great jokes that don't have swear words, that don't have, um, you know, um, graphic um, explanations, mm. that aren't anecdotes that include, you know, kind of adult situations. You know, you can have great comedy that's mega clean and super fucking funny. The idea that it has to be dirty or push boundaries to be successful is bogus. It's just not true. Mm. You can just be a great writer. Yeah. You know, um, I suppose it's more about reserving the right, you know, and and knowing that there's a palette and a, and, a, and a bell curve that's that big. You know, some people won't respond to that clean stuff. And it's, you know, and to be honest, it's largely because they're not particularly smart. They're not particularly intelligent enough mm. to understand the nuance of great writing. Mm. Not a lot of people are going to enjoy, you know, The Seven Samurais, you know, as a film. It's a brilliant film. It makes a lot of sense. It's incredible. People are going to watch that movie and go, well, that movie sucks. And, they, and it sucks to them because they're stupid, but it doesn't matter. They're not going to pay for it. So if you want to be a professional, if you want to be successful, you have to pay your hex debt. You know, mm. to, as, as a callback to what we were talking about before, yeah. like, there's a price to pay. You yeah. have to service all of these people. So you can do comedy like that and you'll have the audience that you deserve, which is a, which is a bunch of pe- pencil neck geeks and, and smart guys who are just on the DO, you know, and no one knows they're that smart, but they like James Matthews. So they're like pretty clever, you know. <laughs> um, but, you, but if you want to be successful, you have to service all of these people. And, and if you're like, the, like my comedy i've got some real intellectual stuff on one side and i've got some real dirty stuff on the other and it's not a mistake mm. you know because if you want to be successful you can't if you want to be a successful car manufacturer you can't just sell corollas you're gonna to have to sell a hilux as well you're gonna to have to have a high-end sports car in, mm. in, in your group of cars that you make right it's like any business so the idea that we have to not ever be challenging or not be dirty or not tell graphic jokes or whatever is incredibly limiting, especially considering that you can't cancel Joe Rogan. Mm. So what, he just gets a monopoly? Dave Chappelle, Bill Burr, these, just, these guys just stay big and get bigger because they're the only option? Because when a guy who's not successful makes jokes like they make, we cancel them because mm. we can and mm. you can't cancel them. What happens mm. when they die? It's over. Yeah. It's yeah. the end. Yeah. One yeah. thing, one thing I was thinking about there is uh, I listened to Andrew Schultz, you know, his, his podcast over in the States. And one thing that he said in like that, I, that I, that I took away from it and is uh, he said, he said, apes shall not kill ape, you know, in refer, re- like in reference to comedians attacking other comedians and stuff like that. And I think that's a really, like like bottom of the barrel thing to do like you know, you know even for musicians and you know whatever what you know like if you're in any kind of creative endeavor it's a fucking struggle from the start you know it's a long yeah, way man. to the top you know yeah and it's and it's a fucking really really you know way we're making jokes and stuff but everybody you know if you're not if you're listening to this and you're you're you know you're just a 
average regular regular joe like if you if you decide one day that you would like to be a comedian you just got to know that it's going to be a three year five year ten year it's a grind know, man grind you know and there, there isn't a guarantee at the end of that and 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 when you yeah. when you know like going against the people of your your culture whether you agree with them or not or you know trying to play things like that i, I just think it's I don't know, man. I, 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 really, I really feel for you that because it's just... Mm. Dude, you, you just fucking have to love it. And if you're doing it to make money, um, you just shouldn't do it. You, you have to... And I think that's a cool thing about people who do rise to the top and, and become successful is I haven't seen one yet that I didn't think was a heartfelt expression. Mm. That they actually love it and want to be there. And there's mm. a vulnerability about that. Great comics are vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. And it, this is why I don't... What's that guy um, out, of, out of LA tells really obscene jokes? What's his name? You'll know the guy. Super obscene, tells dead baby jokes. He's over the top. LA guy. Oh, I, I know. I know. I know you're talking about it. I, he, and he's, yeah, um, huge, hugely famous, but he's famous for just really gross shit. Tim mm. Dillon? And I can't... No, no, it's not. No, I love Tim Dillon. Not Tim Dillon. I was going to say, Tim Dillon's not that dark. No, he? no, I love Tim Dillon. No, I can't remember his name. He's, he's like a real good looking guy, a real sharp haircut. Yeah. Um, beard? Can't re- Sorry? Beard? He's got a. Yeah, he's got like, like a little beard. He's like uh, yeah. really sharp. He's like, a, he's a good looking guy. And, yeah. he's, and he's just absolute filth. And I can't stand him. He's got a real smug demeanor. I don't like him. He's really niche, but because he's at the top of the game, he's got a huge following. Mm. Fuck, I wish I could remember his name. But the thing about it is, I don't like it. Like mm. it's outside my it's outside my taste. Yeah. Because because it's predominantly shock. Shock, shock humor. Shock shock yeah. entertainment. And it's like it's not nuanced and he's just sort of you know, I get that it's satire. And he's probably a lovely guy. He might even be like quite a broken person. Mm. given the you know but the material given yeah. the material right and and given that he feels he has to go to these depths but he's he has the monopoly on that market and good on him and in business fucking high five have a trophy but i don't fucking listen to his stand-up because i just to me it's just not particularly artistic and good it's just not mm. my fucking thing you know mm. like if, if you're not good I don't care where you hail from or what your personal opinion is politically or otherwise. If it's just not good, it's just not good. The Dave Chappelle thing is last special with the trans stuff. Well, I just didn't enjoy it and had nothing to do with my political leanings. It was just, mm. it's just, you got obsessed, man. You got obsessed and you lost your edge. See, I think when you're talking there, so you mentioned earlier about like, obviously Chappelle went back in to the, he joined the argument, right? And it was basically in reference to that. Was it Sticks and Stones, the one where he... The, the, no, the, I enjoyed Sticks and Stones. I or, or the, no, Stones. I mean, was that the, the where the backlash came from? Was yes. that the trans... Was it yeah. Sticks and Stones? Yes. Anyway, um, and it's and like... It was reasonable, and it was completely reasonable. He said stuff, you get yeah. backlash. Was that, the one, was that the one where he said, uh, does anybody watch Fine and Neverland? I feel like HBO were just putting baby dicks in my ears for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking incredible joke. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> but like the the thing is the thing about some going in on it is like the Beatles did that. Yeah. You know, they'd release an album, people would shit on it, the critics would shit on it, and they go, Oh, hold on a minute, don't you fucking shit on this? You know, Dr. Dre. Now you thought Dre fell off. You know what I mean? Like in yeah. 2001. Like, yeah, man. Yeah, and yeah. I think, I think. If he'd have came, if he'd have went into it with like fucking so what I did say, mm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, and this is why I did say, it. and you're mm. gonna find this funny, and this is why. The, but it was like it was kind of depressing. I think, yeah. I think that was the issue. He was like, yeah, I did say it, and I feel I feel bad because I don't want to hurt people, and and, mm. and I, get, I get what he was trying to do, but at the same time, like. We are imper- fucking we're all imperfect, man. Yeah, the, the reason me. the reason Hamish and I are doing a year off the booze is not because we're fucking a pair of saints, <laughs> you know. It's like yeah. it's it's because we're imperfect and we're trying to better ourselves. And I think, Look yeah, you can, you can better yourself, but you're still a fucking comedian. 
You know what yeah, I mean? You still, yeah, you still have to perform. It's gonna and, still and, and, tell and, jokes. Yeah, man, and and you, you know, if, if you lose that nuance, I mean, it's nice to be honest, and it's, it's mm. nice to 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 man. If you can't apologize then fuck you. I mean, if you can't say you're sorry when you're in the wrong, mm. I have no fucking respect for you. Mm. The idea that a person doesn't apologize because they're never wrong is fucking gross, you know? Yeah. Like, it's fine. to Apologizing is, is I think, a virtuous trait. I yeah. think it's a very virtuous thing to admit that you have faults. Be, be up front and forthcoming when you're wrong and issue a heartfelt apology that's, mm. that's honest and true, something that you mean. And you can fucking smell it on a person when they're sorry for what they did, mm. you know? But I don't think a comedy special is a good place to do that because there's nothing funny about an apology if you mean it. Mm. Yeah. I, it's not that's, funny. That's true, man. Yeah. I definitely that's think true. he could have saved himself, you know, all the production, you know, all the money that he put up for it. If he just, you know, did it on an Instagram live or something, you know, did a Kevin Hart, yeah, Kevin Hart out apology. of the way, took an extra couple of years off, and and now I can be funny again because yeah, it's, not, just... it's not fucking funny. Like it's not like well, it's just a, the mix isn't right. I mean, yeah. Well, so um, Melbourne Comedy Festival, right? Mm. They do this thing, and I don't do the festivals, and that's on purpose. I mean, there's a reason why I do stuff independently. I've been over to Ireland, I've been to England, I've gone and done stand up. Um, independently for, for better or worse i mean i didn't fucking kill it and i didn't kill it in england but i but uh i was there a month after Chappelle and i did perform on the same stage as him and, and that was at um um the east end of london it was fucking incredible it was an incredible mm. experience you know but i didn't make money on that thing you know i went there for the for the joy of it um but there's an interesting thing about like just being honest in your stand-up like honestly trying to be funny I yeah. feel like if you're trying to make a point, you're probably fucked before you even start. Because the point is being funny. Mm. If you're trying to make some sort of political point, you have to be a comedic genius to tie that into. And I think when guys are younger, maybe they're pure enough to do it. But you get older, you get jaded. You ever notice like, like older guys can't even talk without... <laughs> like disclosing some massive secret about what a fucking prick they are or or some terrible fucking thing <laughs> because they're so fucking racked with guilt or their consciousness is just so fucking clouded with something they're angry about is it like about. is it like when they say shit like oh well yeah when i was younger i used to go out five nights a week and then oh, i can't do that anymore yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and it's because... like you're about to tell me that you cheated on your wife right yeah? <laughs> like this is coming out <laughs> yeah you don't speak to your oh. kids now mm, yeah seen that one coming yeah, yeah can... I, I get that yeah because because you can't hide it anymore mm. religious people it happens when with christians it happens when they get old and they, because they believe that they're going to go to heaven if they're good enough, mm -hmm. Christian, Christian people fuck up because when they get older, it's like, well, now I really got to fucking put some points on the board because <laughs> I've yeah. done some shit. So, so yeah. now it's like, I, it's like the, so the fuck, everyone out of the pool, mm. that is the mm. fuck, the, you know, the gig's up and now we got to fucking be honest. And now, you know, and it's why old people give whack advice all the time. They can't fucking help it. They're trying to contribute, but nobody cares. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> That is so true, man. That yeah. is, oh. and, but it's not a good ingredient in stand-up. Mm. Yeah. So when you see all the stand-ups that are successful and still super funny, you have to know that that's still a human being and they, they're still racked with guilt and they're still, you know, brimming with emotion and maybe overflowing with emotion. Mm. They have this special gift where they can compartmentalize that and push that to the side and speak relevant, funny, satirical yeah. commentary. And they have this ability to push it to the side. It's a mistake to think that they're able to swim in all of that and still create mm. good content. They're absolutely not. This is an ability to ignore or push to the side a broken... And we've seen it because they keep killing themselves. I mean, we know it's true 
because we see these guys literally kill themselves. Yeah, and it's the same same in music, man. Yeah. Fucking same in music. We, yeah, it's it's uh, and it's we have Hamish and I. We've spoken about this. There is a hundred percent. You've got to be mentally ill to to go yeah. and stand in front of yeah. a thousand people okay, and so, say and say love me. Okay. You yeah, know what I, mean? I, I agree. All I would say to that is mentally ill or enormously mentally resilient. Yeah. Like mm. you're holding back, yeah. like you're holding back a door yeah. with a body of water behind it. Yeah. And, while you're performing, and eventually it just gets too much. Yeah. It, Man, that's it, such a good. You know what? That's that's my positive spin on my. Mental instability. <laughs> I got a big, strong arm, and I'm holding it all back. Fuck yeah, man! Push That's it a very good way of looking at it, actually. Well, it's just a different, I guess, idea, and it comes from a, like I'm 41. Yeah, you know, it's glass, glass, put, half full, like, half empty kind of thing, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 I guess from a, from a from a like a uh, yeah, well, it is. It, it really is. It's all your perspective. Yeah. And um, the tool that I use, I suppose, when I'm when I'm trying to you know, be a good guy or trying to reduce my stress or trying to mm. look well is I think about that body of water behind this door that I'm like, don't come out here and crush me and, and don't fucking leak too much through and people find out the truth that you're a tragically sad person and you're just holding back. <laughs> with um, two jet skis. With two jet skis. And you're holding back. The idea that you can reduce some of that load and make mm. it make everything easier. Like I'm in control of how much pressure I take on, and I can sort of reduce that by approaching things more positively and caring less about what's back there. Mm. And I can reduce that load. And 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 then if you care about what you do and you care about your art, the big driver or the big lever is thinking, well, this will make me better at what I do. Because yeah. I can perform better if I'm not putting 90% of my fucking effort into just holding all this shit back. Mm. So I can deal with some of that stuff, you know, and it's never been a better time to get tools, coping mechanisms, and having access to those things that are going to really help you to deal with some of the tragic shit you've dealt through if you've had trauma or you've mm. had, you know, family issues or whatever it is you know, that's happened to you, that mm. whatever it is, whatever burden you're carrying through life that's restricting you or holding you back, there's never been a better time in history um, to be able to, um, yeah, assess and take on some of that shit, you know. Mm. It's, it's a really good thing because I think we've lost, hey, too, many great, we've lost too many great people. Would you, I, I, look, I would, I, I wouldn't, I don't like the term, uh, you know, the, the, the idea of, you know the the mentally ill thing, Jack. But and I do agree with you, you on your on on your point. But I would also like to say that I think I think a lot of like a lot of ent- people in the entertainment world, I would say a huge percent of showbiz people, you know, just in general, probably have, you know, a low 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 dopamine thing to some level, where where mm-hmm. for them to find happiness is making other people happiness in whatever whatever way possible, and then they've yeah. just found that they're probably you know, fucked at doing anything else, and it's kind of like now, how do we, how do we make this, make this, make this something happen? Or what do I do? Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> man. One road. Yeah. So that's that's so that's tunnel vision. One road. Yeah. yeah. Well, so this th- is one way. So so one way in, one way out, and they yeah. don't see the other avenues. So they just stay on this thing, and it can feel like you're just attacked, or you, you just feel like you just like there's no way, there's nowhere to hide. There's I'm just getting it and there's nowhere to go. Mm. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a, that's a massive fucking thing. And the idea that can only happen to famous people or hyper successful people uh, is, it, that, is not true. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. I had a therapist say to me once, do you think you deserve happiness? And I was like, I honestly don't know. And he was like, so you go with your band and you play shows and you're getting up there and you're being vulnerable as anything to try and give them happiness to then in part give yourself happiness, which is what we do, right? And that I'll say it. It's it's I fucking love getting up on a stage and singing. And a lot of it is down to that. It makes me feel good because it makes me yep. think if you're making these people happy, maybe you're not a piece of shit. So yep. when the cancel culture goes out, right? 
and attacks you for the shit you've said when you're up there trying to make them happy to make yourself feel a little bit better so you don't fucking put a gun in your mouth. Yeah. If they thought about that before they did that and cancelled you, they realise they're the bigger arsholes than anyone else. Yeah. Well, you just do. trying well, to make people happy, yeah. you know? Yeah. So this is the... This is the Fuck, thing. I needed to get that off my chest. Mate, <laughs> mate, I couldn't agree more. And what really makes me sick is that these aren't... Look, I forgive stupid people. I forgive mm. ignorant people. But unfortunately, a lot of these guys, they have had that forethought and that afterthought. They're completely aware that what they're doing is wrong mm. and they're willing to do it anyway because the feedback they're getting and the serotonin hit they're getting from their virtue signaling is enough that it's worth it. And that's what they're going to do. And um, it's tragic, but all I can do is consider that they're having their own shit, they're going through their own shit, yeah, and they're yeah. doing what they've got to do to get by. Yeah. And that's what they've got to do to get by. And yeah. these are individuals, and everything's got to be dealt with on a case-by-case you know, basis. And I just sort of can't help but think, look, I hate it and it makes me angry and makes me feel like lashing out. But I lashed out already and it didn't go well. I got shouted mm-hmm. down. I said things like, you're, you know, you're this sort of virtue signaling fucking asshole. You know? and, I, and I lashed out and I, and I spoke my mind and I just got sort of shouted down and I've just given up on it. But out of that has come up maybe a higher understanding or a heightened sensitivity that we're all just going through our own, sh- our own yeah. shit. Yeah. And these people maybe are to more be pitied than blamed. And it's look, it's it's a sad state. If if I feel sad sometimes, living my truth and being pretty honest and pretty straightforward, mm. fuck man, how miserable must it be to not be honest and, and not live your truth and, mm. and live through likes and live through people patting you on the back and going, I agree with you. And and that's how you get your serotonin here. Mm. You know, that mm-hmm. and having to keep that up and having to keep that up because that's how you're fed life. Mm, you're yeah. fed happiness through this through this channel, through this conduit of agreeableness. And mm. then you learn new things which make you disagree with the thing that everyone agrees with and mm. feeds you positivity. And now you learn more and you're like, well, this isn't even true anymore. Mm. This isn't even real anymore. Well, this is all bullshit. But it's the only way I can feel alive, and it's and my friends all reckon it. Yeah, it's yeah. the only way I can, you know. And now, your version of yourself and the person you wanted to be, like, I mean, fuck, man, it's tragic. And there are these kids, and I, you know, like I said, I'm 41, but I look at these guys, you know, these younger guys, and I look at the state that they're in. They're not stupid. Yeah, Young people mm. aren't stupid. I mean, they, they can learn things and they can realize things and they can have epiphanies, you know, that must be so empty. Yeah. So instead of being angry, I'm sad for them. Yeah. You know, and that's a maturity thing. And it's fucking, it sucks because I want to be angry. Yeah. And I see all these videos of these like guys and these guys who are angry there, they get called right wing. Because mm. they're angry about this, you know, it's, oh, you yeah. it's like, well, maybe they are right wing, maybe these, they're not. These, these snowflake leftists, this <laughs> right. these snowflake leftists, yeah. <laughs> right? And they're expressing this crazy anger, but it's sort of like, well, fuck, man, your anger is no different to anyone mm. else's fucking misplaced rage. It's mm. just youthful misplaced yeah. rage, and it's always been there, and it's always been about something. And today, it's about that. But yeah, what what's this? fucking kill themselves over it and that's unforgivable we've got to be more understanding you know hey james have you noticed too like you know before when you were you know we were touching on social media stuff before is you know you know i open facebook i'm trying to stay off it as much as i much as i can at the moment because otherwise just you know but um Looking at boobs. Looking at boobs. <laughs> Looking at boobs. Titties. Titties. <laughs> yeah. That's a... Uh... Ooh, it's Auntie Nora's birthday. Looking at boobs. Looking... <laughs> Auntie Nora's boobs. No, no. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, but uh, yeah. in this, in, in like, in all... Shout series, out to uh... Auntie Nora. <laughs> Dubbo. I want to know you. You know, do you know when you, you, you open up, you, you open up Facebook and you see, you see like, 
And I think a lot, a lot of times what happens is, is, is that if there is going to be any kind of legislation put in, the one thing I would, I, I would ask for is, is people can't share anything until they've actually read what the head, uh, what the article is behind the headline. You know how mm. everyone's trying to be clickbaiting right. and big, yeah. big, big, you know, big businesses trying to direct you and just getting your attention for five seconds. And then there's a lot of people that don't actually read the articles that they're sharing. Okay. And and on top of that is I noticed that like you, you've already realised probably by this like, I'm not very good at uh, you know like like reading uh, writing you know I, I'm. Jack, I, don't I, can, I don't send texts. I just, I just do the voice yeah. ones, and that's about it. But yeah. I read a lot of people's, you know, comments on different things, and you know, I see people that are, you know, 40, 50, 60 on on the Facebook, just like like tearing things down. And you, and you, yeah. you, you have to wonder, you know, like, like, like I, I see so much of it, and just people like, and it, it, like I, could, I can't be bothered, but I, I, I just it just baffles me how people can spend that much time of their day just kind it's, of well it's misplaced rage i mean this is rage this is this is rage misplaced or otherwise even in the right place it's not a good idea like your anger and your rage and and you i mean so using social media as an outlet in any regard is not a good idea it's not a good place to put your rage it's always going to be misunderstood you know but but it's so misplaced and I don't think there's ever really like a, a good place to probably put it. You should probably like self-soothe or something, but... I wonder um, if this is why there's less serial killers in the world now. It's because <laughs> instead of going out like <laughs> and picking up hitchhikers, they go, nah, I'm, gonna take a... I'm just going to shit on BP. Because <laughs> oh, I think... Damn. James, would you agree to this to some sense? Like, it, I, I feel I feel like musicians and comedians are probably the you know we're we're cousins in the show business world. You know what I mean? Like, if if we were yeah. we were chimpanzees, regular... gorillas, chimpanzees, gorillas. Having yeah, well having well having sort of, I guess crossed. Oh, you've that. done both. You yeah, so... you're a chimp now. You're a gorilla. Hey man, I would totally agree. And I and even though the drugs were different, um. That was maybe my journey, but they're probably the same. That's mm. the business, and you know, I've spent fuck. It's been it's been fucking insane. But they are the same people. But they really are, dude. They really are the same people. It's a dis, it's a different discipline, but it's almost like carpenters and plumbers. Mm. You know, they're mm. at the same place. I mean, they're on the same site. They're doing different things, but they're both getting paid to build something and sell it. Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. I like that analogy um yeah did you you know in, in your time playing music and then transitioning into to stand up like was it was it did, was it difficult or did it what did it kind of feel like a natural progression because i mean i mean i feel like going into comedy you know would be with you know would looks like a not 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 an easier thing to do but like it looks like a good creative endeavor compared to to, to acting or you know yeah or no, dancing well, I did, well well i did well yeah um stand up i was drawn to um yeah. because i'd already written music um and even as a drummer you know i wrote rock songs and stuff like that because i you know i um like piano was my first instrument and i was able mm. to like write like for the bands that i was in playing drums i was able to write songs and and write lyrics definitely like maybe more so probably with the lyric writing and that kind of leads more into writing stand-up because you're writing words and sort of stuff, you know. Um, so it was, it was an easy transition artistically. The people made it hard. Yeah. And I've acted too. Like I've written, um, so I wrote commercials. I've written a couple of ads for um, this taxi company up here in Brisbane, Black and White Cabs. Another Shout out YouTube. Black and White Cabs. <laughs> love them hey love them great business to work for and and i wrote uh i wrote three ads for them and and wrote and, and cast myself in the ads so if smart you, <laughs> if smart. you yeah, yeah. Get, paid, get paid twice yeah. Right? so if you so yeah so if you uh if you youtube like, oh, wait, I like the idea see. that you're like can yeah, you like... film me <laughs> go into this place and then get me from that place and film me going back home so you want a taxi? Yeah, 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 but you can film me and pay me for the gym. <laughs> yeah, bro. And, 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 Black and um, white cabs. <laughs> and, I did a, and I think I did a good job. At the time, I thought I did a good job. And it wasn't mm. years later until I realized that this trilogy of commercials have me as a taxi driver in one ad 
and then a passenger and another. Nice. <laughs> so there's no continuity. So, what, so this guy was driving for him, and then like, what? He got a job, like a proper one, and then he's catching the cab. <laughs> you know? So there's no kind of makes absolutely no sense. There's another one that's in like a the the, the best one. Is, you know what's funny is after I wrote these ads, which are not bad. They are not badly written. I, I stand behind them. But I but. Uh, another dude started writing ads for them and he cast me in the mm. ads. So, so there are these ads after that I'm in. You're in them as well. I'm in those as well. So is, as uh, far as anyone's concerned, whenever they get in one of those cabs, it's you. It's, it's me, it's yeah. You. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm on the business cards. Wow. I'm on the business wow. cards. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Why man. are we just getting to this now? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so is that how you be, is that how you get jet skis then as a comedian? You 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 be, my, my you favorite. stage you're a comedian and then secretly start a cab yeah. business up in <laughs> Brisbane. Black and white black and white cabs, Brisbane, water taxis, and it's just you on a jet ski. <laughs> they've had to buy, yeah. I'll give yeah. you a lift, Toots. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey Toots. Hey Toots. Get on the oh, back of the on. ski. Come on. <laughs> it was um, actually my bass player's mother is the marketing director for the company. Oh, okay. And Nepotism. Kinda... See what that is? That's your privilege right there. Yeah, totally. Absolutely, your man. Privilege. It's, who, it's who you know. There's, look, there's no doubt about it. I just don't it for the right thing, man. Because I can't help it. I didn't mm. choose it. If you, if you choose to do something bad, right, then you take responsibility for that. Yeah. If you mm. choose to do something good, and you take responsibility for it, then you're bragging, you're boasting. Yeah. Yeah, man. Can I? Do you find it harder to take, like, like, like? I I would be the first to admit when I do something wrong, right? But when I do something good, I find it really hard to talk about, right? For some reason, because it feels if you 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 know, and and it's weird, you know. You I like I'll I'll be the first to say I did something wrong, but I'll I'll you know I'll never tell anybody I did something good because if I do, it feels like. I'm, You're right. bragging. If, well, uh, yeah, right. So, no. if, all right, easy. If we're to believe that, and I do believe that of you, that means you're a good person. That's great because you're not doing it for show. You're not doing it for a pat on the back. You're not doing it to make a big deal out of it. So that's great. That 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 shows a decency in a person. That's a good thing. I know, but it mm. feels like you know, you know what I mean. Like you, I like I'll admit to a lot of wrong things that I do and kind of wear it on my wear it on my you know sleeve of. You know, you know, of all that, all the, all the nights drinking and whatever, and doing, you know, various, uh, various things. But I'll never, I'll never go. But I did, you know, I did this nice Man, thing. I'll bet. <laughs> okay, Hamish, tell me if I'm wrong. I'll bet when you acknowledge people, you do it privately, and and are conscious that an over the top, hey, that was a great job. Hey, everyone, give them a clap. Might not, they might be sensitive to that. So you kind of quietly go, hey. I like what you did there. Yeah, okay. yeah. And you almost whisper it to them. Like, yeah, oh, that was, I acknowledge you for that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's another thing because it's another way that people give themselves a pat on the back. It's like, oh, look at me congratulating the guy that did the thing that mm. we all agree with. <laughs> you, know, you know what's an interesting thing? So I remember, uh, I remember when I first started working when I was like 16, I was going to work with this guy when I was doing an apprenticeship and he always said hello to, you know, like the ticket attendants when you go on like through a yeah. tunnel or a bridge or whatever, right? And he'd always, hello, how was your day and all that? And I was always like fascinated by it. And he was like, this could be the only conversation they have all day. Yeah. And he's like, and I'm not doing it. So you go, oh, I think it's really nice that you do that. He's yeah. like, this might be it. Of if that's their hum human interaction and it's not like if he went i've just give 10 million dollars to a charity in africa I like know, know. it's not that but just the little human decencies yeah. make you a good person but yeah. it's not like it's, you know, this is where it's we character. are it's character man. it's where it's we character. are in the state of the world that to be a good person makes you an arsehole right because yeah. Because now it's like yeah, because you're using yeah, it as a vehicle. Yeah, yeah, well, fuck you, fuck you, give him money. <laughs> you know what okay, so, okay, but so, you don't, okay, but so. you don't say hello to people, and it's like <laughs> it's like a fucking weird right. 
tightrope. To, to balance it. Yeah. To, and I agree. But to, to, to balance it, let me tell you what I did. Because I did a bad thing. And it's it's sort of in the same bad, brain, bad thing. Well, it is a bad thing. It's on the other I did side. A bad, of the bad brain, thing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I run a I run a personal training business, right? Where I yeah yeah. So I run as a well as the, business. the and business. What, and what else do you not do? I run a property mate. I got a property maintenance business as well. Yeah. Go but on. I run this PT business, right? Yeah. So this is just to balance out. We're talking about good character and virtuousness and whatever. This is mm. just because it, it's all and so that that sort of slightness, which is just being like a, it's just a really sleight of hand thing that might be good characters to say hello to a ticket inspector on a train or to, mm. you know, just be decent to a, mm. I don't know, a butler or someone in a foyer at a hotel or just be nice to a cleaner or whatever. That's a nice thing. But mm. it also exists on the other side where I can be a complete animal to a person who probably doesn't deserve it because I feel like they do deserve it. Mm. So I'm running down this, thing this is this happened to me yesterday and i'm running with a client you know and uh we're running and she was running too slow and i got angry at her it's like you can run faster than that you know like you gotta go harder you know because i'm a pt and i'm a piece of shit so i gotta yell at this lady and uh and she's sort of like i'll try to do better but she quickly becomes exhausted and we're riding we're running beside the river and i'm making her run faster she we go we run past this other lady we run it past her, we overtake her. Uh, and then 10 meters past her, we stop running because it's just too much for my client. And then this woman who we've overtaken, she runs in front of us and makes the comment, you, you shouldn't just stop like that. Like you shouldn't just be running and then just stop running. And then I she, hope <laughs> you pushed her into the river. Well, we're, well, I said, well, how would you like to swim instead? And, and nice. She, she nice. Stops, she turns around. She stops. She turns around. She's like, I beg your pardon. I said, you heard me. You want to go for a swim? And, and, and like, I'm so glad my, my client is a lovely, lovely woman. Uh, and I'm so glad she was there because she kind of, Segway, she goes, We pay our taxes, we've got just as much right to be here as <laughs> nice. I was like, Yeah, fuck yeah, take it away from me. Threatening yeah. The- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I guess my point is that it sort of counterbalances that. It's sort of like as it, it's sort of almost the same thing. Like mm. being being decent is easy if you're a decent person. Mm. Um, but so is like an outburst that might make you look terrible. So it's almost mm. like the way that you're viewed really depends on what day it is, what the situation is and, you know, the interaction or how you're feeling that day and the environment. And there's all of these variables, but both of those things exist for decent people. That time that you were like unnecessarily rude because Mm. you're just fed up with the world and you tell some woman you're going to push her in the river. And then the time when you're really nice to the ticket inspector on the train, who you genuinely dislike because he's a narc. But you're going to be nice, <laughs> right? Because it's nice, right? So, so both of those things exist. Now, the ticket inspector thinks I'm a lovely guy, uh, but the woman running on the river who made a remark and got her head bitten off thinks I'm an absolute devil. Mm. So the difference is that if you get caught out being a devil, it could ruin you. But it's yeah. the same person. Like this, yeah. this, this yin and yang, this to and fro, this, it's absolutely normal and there's just absolutely no understanding or tolerance for people to be human beings that are multifaceted and mm. they're right and they're wrong yeah. and then maybe they're making a joke purposely because it's wrong and maybe it being wrong is what's funny about it there's mm. no tolerance anymore there's no we're not even trying to understand and if a person doesn't agree with us will purposefully mischaracterize them for the greater good. Yeah, as they are a shitty person, top to bottom. Yeah, yeah because they don't agree with us. So for the greater good, we'll mischaracterize them to silence mm. them, maybe deplatform them. And that shows no character. I mean, that's mm. a negative. That shows absolutely zero character. Right? Mm. You know, so anyway, that's all I want to say. It was just, it was just, as much as you're a good guy, as much as yeah. you can be like a really great person yeah. and show really yeah. good character, you can be on the other side. Just don't get caught over yeah. here. Don't get caught being human. Don't get caught being frustrated. Never get, never get caught 
actually being like all those people who I'm sure, yeah. you know, who uh, were, who, uh, you know, whiter than white and <laughs> righter than right as well. <laughs> oh, God damn. Saying, you, you know, yeah. all that shit. And then, and then, then actually go home and beat the wives up to a country song. But man, how do your podcast, right? So you've got this podcast. Yeah. And it goes on for 38 minutes, right? Yeah. I feel like you can rant for four hours, eight, yeah. eight hours, 10 hours yeah. if you need to. How do well, they all go on? What's it called? It's Beer is... Shark, isn't it? Beer Shark, Beer Shark. Yeah, but this is, well, this is out. way different. Well, this is shout way it different. out, Hamish. Hamish, shout it out. Beer what? Shark. Beer Shark. Beer Shark. Get on it. Beer Shark. Get on it. Get on it. Huh. We'll leave a link in the bio. Yeah. It's because Beer Shark is disgusting. Yeah. And I can only tolerate myself for half an hour. Mm. So 37 minutes or 34 minutes or whatever it may be is just over the top and it's too much. And I disgust myself because it's, it's, and we've had this conversation about like, who's the target audience for this thing. Mm. And as best we can tell, it's just degenerates. And even they can't tolerate an hour of this filth. And I don't even, like we were saying in pre-production, we were talking about, I can't tolerate myself at the best of times. But that's a very specific thing. Beer Shark is a very specific thing. Yeah. It's meant to be disgusting. The, and, uh, Jack Marshall, fucking shout out my producer, Jack Marshall. And, yeah. and we have a production company called Marshall Cast and we film comedy specials and we all, we, you know, we're into all that sort of stuff. I sound like, uh, I'm sounding like an You sound like you need You sound like one of the Kardashians. <laughs> yeah. So Entrepreneur. We do- I do that, yeah. But I mean, yeah. it's just a legitimate thing, and we, you know, we've made um, web series, and we, you know, we've done some cool shit. Um, yeah. But the the podcast is, I think, just geared to be disgusting. It's always going to be disgusting. It is about to take a turn. We're going live. Mm. We're changing the format. We're nice. changing. We're changing the name of the podcast. We're going to change it to Shout Engine. Okay. Shout Engine was this. Our this an exclusive. Shout Engine was our distributor and okay. uh, they, they discontinued us i think it was because we're disgusting and uh, we did a little search we put a bit of effort in and we found out that the domain is available the instagram handle is available that's so we're so, going to change the name that's to- so petty <laughs> so we changed the name to the whole thing to the shout engine and uh, we're going that's live so fucking petty so, <laughs> <laughs> so oh, now we're i respect that engine. that's so petty <laughs> And uh, well, it's just, you know, in the in the vein and in the in the in the in the in the true character yeah. of the podcast, we're going to do that, and uh, and we're going live. So the format will be a live con- a live stand up show uh, where we'll have uh, an opener and an MC um, mm. and a support act. Then we'll have a headliner, and the the headliner will do twenty minutes, and then be our guest, and then we'll do. Uh, sort of 20, 30 minutes um, with the headliner as our guest. And that'll be the new format and it'll, and it'll be a live podcast. So that's kind of where we're going with it. And we think that that, I mean, in our imagination, that seems like that's going to do better or, or be like more interactive or more fun, mm. you know? Mm. And it's not going to be like an expensive thing. I think, we're I, think I think the too. idea of it being live as well, man, is like, you know, for the listener and everything and you know the viewers if you're doing it that way like it's fucking it just people love live you know yeah man and we've got the production value so you know it's gonna be cool like we'll we'll have a mic set up to catch or the audience react yeah it's a lot of work for jack because i have no fucking idea what the fuck i'm doing he's gonna have to mix this thing yeah man so like you are me and hamish is jack basically (laughs) this yeah that's what's like I don't have a clue about anything. I just say, could we do this? And he goes, <laughs> he goes, oh, man. And then we, could. We, we hope. We hope. <laughs> man, I, uh, yeah. So I listened to it. I had a nice commute, a perfectly timed commute, if you ask me for the podcast. And it was like a bit dark. And I was sat at the traffic lights and had my windows down. And I thought, what do people think? <laughs> think is going on in this car right now <laughs> can, can, can i just while, while you're talking about pulling up at traffic lights i've got a new hobby and it's the most strangest thing this is probably me me uh me taking out my frustrations with the world but it's in a yeah you know it's in a way that only makes me laugh right i go when i go into the city i'm studying at the moment so i'm driving over to the other side of sydney and i have to go through the sydney cbd and you know the sydney when 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 you know they go through the cbd there's you know huge traffic it, 
uh, pedestrian lanes where you've got 50 people trying to get across the road. Right. And my new favorite hobby, and <laughs> I, I think I'm the only one who finds the amusement in this. Like I feel like I is is I play movie soundtrack themes as and, and make when they pull up one the windows down let people walk across the Jurassic Park theme song. <laughs> The Jurassic yes. Park theme song is yeah, just a and, good and song people, can't, well. people can't stop and tell me to fuck off because there's millions of people behind them. So they kind of just. I love the idea of Swan Cross. I'm going. Funny. Go on, go on. It's so funny. Is, and that, play. is that Richard Attenborough talking? Welcome to Jurassic Park. Well, oh, <laughs> oh, as, as, the lights, as the lights go red and I see oh. that one go green with the little man and the. T- yeah. <laughs> I'll start so what's the this. sound system? What's the hookup? What's the sound system like? Like, are we pumping? Yeah, what we're pumping. Doing? I've got all windows down. <laughs> I'm pumping stubs. I've, I've I've maxed out my uh my EQ in my, yeah. in my car, and I've, yes. I've and and like the other day I got it. I got it perfect. And I started the Star Wars theme song at the start. Oh, oh. yes. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh man. Yeah, 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 yeah. But for just for my own comedic value, it doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta. Um, uh, the themes have to be kind of uh, like curated for your position in the traffic. Yeah. Like if you're behind someone yeah. and you're just like really slowly getting closer to the back um, of their bumper. Bum, 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 Carry it to fire. Bum, bum, that's, bum, that's my go to for bum, that bum, one. I imagine that's Star Wars. Well, man, yeah. <laughs> if you're stalking and you do the jaws and the cycle. Oh, oh, that, that's bum, my creeping bum, up bum, one. Bum, bum. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's yeah, the yeah, cyclist, yeah. the cyclist in the cycle lane, man, and you just creep up. You've never seen people look more confused in their entire lives, and I just this is a, it this is a good happy. game. This is a good, a good game. game. I like that game. game. This has to be filmed. I feel like oh, you, man, this has to yeah. be. It's fun. Let's, let's, let's do a cross. Let's do a crossover episode sometime, man. I'd like to meet Jack and. Yeah, man. See what hey. weird shit he's into at the traffic lights. Dude, he's in. All, he's. This is a super interesting dude, man. He's yeah. Not, he, yeah. Fuck yeah, man. And it's it's kind of ruined people in a way, um, in Brisbane or or across like comedy, like because you know I told you about this fuck with like making up mm. lies about he caused trouble for me. Um, but one of the biggest problems for him when expressing that I'm some kind of, you know, bigot or whatever it is, whatever he wants to say about me. Is the, the bane of his existence is that one of my best mates and my uh, you know um, business partner Jack is this bisexual like openly gay lovely guy who mm. I absolutely love and we're fantastic friends and everyone knows who he is he's, he's quite successful I mean we did Sydney Fringe together and mm. and you know we've had the podcast and we've made web series and we've done these together so. I think what really has stunted his ability to sort of, <laughs> you know, really hurt me is they're like, well, hang on, isn't he like mates with Jack and Jack and they're like really close. Mm. And I think that's kind of stopped it in his path, but, in a, but it's sort of the same thing as the, him not really realizing I had a relationship with this girl he made up the story about. It's, it's just luck. And it yeah. makes me think, fuck, like if that wasn't the case. Yeah. Where isn't it I... nice to be lucky? Well, it isn't is it like... nice? Isn't it nice to be privileged? It's nice, Jake. It's <laughs> nice. I'm gonna tell you, it's nice. <laughs> Hamish, I'm very, very tired. Oh, me James too, man. Matthew, you are chat. a hero. This Hamish, Hamish, he, he's been going through a bit of shit lately, and he needed this. I heard that. I heard he that. How's it been, this. Hamish? Talk to us, man. Talk to us, man. What's going on? Ah, oh, look, man. It's just, it's just in that weird, weird stage, right? Where, where you, you. You you you're just kind of going. Uh, you you're just kind of coming back to realizing it's just me and Beaker. You know you know what I mean. Like I think it's the limbo state, man. Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's, I think it's I think you know this this time around like you know whatever. But um, you just you're just more aware of your you know the 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 changes that are going that are going on and and you just. I don't know. I feel I feel like I'm being a psychologist to myself because I'm just realizing little 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 things. You, 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 all of a sudden, like I was saying to Jack, like a you know a couple of weeks ago, I was begging to be more of a hermit in my bed bedroom and being able yeah. to do millions of other things, and you know just needed more time to get on top of shit. And 
Yeah. And then within a week, you kind of you, you're all of a sudden in this situation where, fuck, man, being alone, being alone is kind of a, a little bit of a burden just because now you now your mind starts to, you know, starts to play play. You're play alone good. with your thoughts, and it might not be. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. That, and and that 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 I and I and I know that that's just something you got to write out. It's kind of, it kind of almost feels too like you're withdrawing from something, you know, like. Uh, yeah, whether you've given up yeah you start yeah. to feel some you start to feel some sort of like as a hermit you, you start to feel some sort of like cowardice as if you're hiding away from your problem so okay got an answer for you man that's all about balance you've got to you've got to balance mm. your exposure to people and and you've got to understand that you know if you if you're alone with your thoughts and that's challenging get out and be with people yeah man that's like 100 percent so it's all about being conscious of it. And the other thing is that I found this really helpful uh, when I went through tough times and, and and felt incredibly alone, whether like I broke up with some girl or whether I just felt like the fucking world's against me or whatever. Um, there's this thing that's reiterated over and over again um, when people are trying to cheer you up or even in these sort of, they just, these quotes, these affirmations, they start to feel pathetic after a while. They start mm. to feel really empty. Oh, there's a world of opportunity. Plenty more fish in the sea. You know, all this oh, kind of thing. It's that. disgusting. Well, they've yeah. become so meaningless and yeah. unhelpful yeah. because you know that that's not about you. So mm. it's yeah. like, you know, it's like these people who get inspired by these ridiculous quotes. <laughs> like, you deserve more. And it's like, you don't know me. And maybe I'm a piece of shit. Maybe I deserve a kick in the balls. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I deserve a kick in the balls. Like, that's not about me. So, um, so what I did and what helped me through those times wasn't um, those reiterations of abundance elsewhere. Like, oh, well, there's going to be all these opportunities. There's plenty more fish in the sea. Don't worry. There's a, a whole world out there. All of these sort of affirmations, which I found completely unhelpful because they weren't related to me and they weren't necessarily true, which meant that they, that they had no value. Um, look at it the other way and think about who you are as a person, your own personal scope and what you're capable of. And instead of saying there's so much more of all of that waiting, turn it the other way and think, well, there's just so much more of Hamish. Yeah, man. It's like... Or Seamus. <laughs> or Seamus. There's so much more of Seamus. But you know what I mean? Like think, well, there's just yeah. so much yeah. more of this to be explored. This is just getting started and there's just so much more that I'm going to impact that. So less of all of this impacting me and mm. more of more, there's, I'm going to make a fucking mark here. There's more of me to impress upon mm. all of that and, yeah. and make it about that. That's empowering. And that's also much more truthful than these empty affirmations and this horseshit, which only really feeds weak-minded people. It's bullshit. Yeah. That's not true. And it's, and people do it because there's not a lot of them. So they can't say what you're saying to yourself. They can't say there's just so much more of Vanessa to give. I'm going to buy a Barry's. <laughs> I'm going to go to the markets. You know, it's not true yeah. for them, but it is true for you. So I'd encourage you just to look at yeah, it. Yeah, man. Way. I think I think it's just doing it like 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 doing all you know exercise and doing things that you you, yeah. you like doing and picking up you know instruments and stuff and just just yeah, kind of man. yeah. It's it's just a, it's just a funny it's just a funny feeling like. I, I think that I think the biggest thing is like the you know the the all of it all of a sudden and, and the brain starts remembering the, the all the good things and kind of going tricking you into you know believing things but when to you know maybe a month yeah. ago your your mindset was like I oh, want more time and it's like oh you got it you, you you've you've won son and you and, and all of a sudden it's just I don't know it's in the uh, doing man it's in the activity it's in the doing yeah you get busy, man. You get busy. And, and, and when you're busy, you know, you're, you're focused and you're doing something and you're creating, um, at least uh, people go, oh, yeah, but, you know, you should be alone with your thoughts and you should mm. process. Bullshit. Not true. Yeah, no, Those no, no. thoughts are not unique. Those thoughts aren't like any other thoughts. They're not special thoughts. Yeah. The question is, are they helpful thoughts? Yeah. Do you think not helpful. The, do, the other thing as well is, like, if in six weeks, right, you're in your mind going, oh, remember all the good things, what am I right? You might be two completely different people. Why then? Yeah. Time heals shit. I know. I've been with my missus nine years and it's been a few fucking, <laughs> few, fucking few wars in that time. Right. I mean, with me moving to Australia a whole year before she moved here. Yeah, just shit goes on, you know what I mean? So if it that is. happens, yeah. then good. Right? But if it doesn't happen, then good. You'll be fine. I'm oh, here. Look. 
I'll tell you what. And the and the best piece of advice someone ever gave me, and I do this once a week, is I put YouTube on. It's not on Spotify. And I listen to Baz Lerman wear sunscreen. Hey, and that, that any time I, any time I'm feeling a bit low or whatever in my life, I just I listen to that, and that shit puts me ten steps ahead of anything else. I don't think Baz Lerman, man, yeah, wear sunscreen. Yeah, man. I, I, I'm looking forward to getting fit again. That's the my main thing. It's like it's like you know getting that getting that good kind of um, just wear you know, sunscreen, baby. Just yeah. wear sunscreen. <laughs> yeah. fit, hey, um, you know Hamish, the fitness thing is fucking real, man. That's real. Saved my life. I yeah, was, I was playing drums and um in in heaps of different bands and drinking way way too much and I had yeah. like stomach pumped and all kinds of shit, all this self loathing. Like I just yeah. was sad as fuck. Uh, you know, and and dude, I ended up in hospital having my stomach pain. I was told if you keep drinking, you're gonna die. And um and discovered fitness and went off to college and and got accredited. I mean, I, it's like I said, like I get so fucking locked into shit. I'm it's all consuming. And mm. uh, I went and did that, man. And it's totally saved my life. Turned me around. And even now, you know, I'm down at the gym. I'm doing what I'm doing. It's a massive um asset to you, and it is a worthy distraction. So. I think rather than thinking um, what a lot of people be, oh, you're just distracting yourself. You're not dealing with your issues. Instead of thinking along those lines, thinking along the lines of, is this a worthy distraction? Mm. Yeah. If you're, if you're building things, if you're creating, if you're bettering yourself, well, I'm going to say that's a pretty worthy distraction. Mm. If it takes the place of self-loathing, fuck, man. Yeah, 100%. Who, who, who amongst us can say that's a bad idea? Fuck off. You know, these fucking idealists and their bullshit, you know. Right. That is a podcast. James Matthews. Thanks, Thank you very much, man. On West Underground. Hamish, I love you. You'll feel better. Seamus, I love you even more. Seamus. You'll feel amazing. I'm sorry. Everyone, thank you for listening to West Underground. Hit like and subscribe now. Yeah. Follow Be a Shark podcast. Jackie going bad. Jackie going bad right now. Jackie going bad. Say James. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, that's the thing, thing. See you later, fellas.